Hi, my name is Matthew Lillard. You've probably seen me in many a horrible movie back in the 90s. Can we start again? It's me, Matt! Hi, I'm a major motion picture star Matthew Lillard. Uh, hi. All right, Sam. I'm Matthew Lillard. <laughs> What's the line? You just do whatever the fuck. I almost had it. I got a booger on my shirt. What's the first line? I was in terrible movies during the 90s. You grew up on them and you watched them, sucker. My name is Matthew Lillard. You may know me as Beetle from Beetle and Grimm's. Last couple of years, our company is focused primarily on the DM, creating battle maps, in-world handouts, jewelry items, and of course, stuffed animals. Now it's time to focus on you, the players. Because when we gather around a table, we're not there to hear a story, we're there to tell a story, all of us. And sometimes that story goes on for years and is remembered only on coffee-stained scraps of paper or three random journals. But worst of all, it's in your head. And why is that bad? Because I'm not that smart. Bill's way smarter than me. When he says it's Grimm that killed the frost giant that was on its way to destroy the town, I can't really argue with him because I don't have it on a journal. And if I had it in a journal, sitting on a bookshelf, you could just say, hey, check out my journal. We all know the problem with a journal. In a real game, when are you gonna use that thing? On a real night of gaming, you bounce from a core rule book to the advanced player's guide, and of course your character sheet. And the entire game goes like boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, 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 boom. You never go back to this thing. And again, the story is only in your brain, and Bill's telling you that he is the real champion. But what if? Stay with me here. What if, Charlie? Charlie, thanks. What if we created a single book specifically tailored for your character class? And what if it had an enormous character sheet to record every detail of your character, every stat, every strength, weakness, magic item, enemy, ally, even your familiar. And then took all the official Pathfinder rules, the spells, feats, and skills that you need for your class and your class only, and combined that with an expansive journal to capture your story. And obviously it's only useful if it's on heavy paper to handle the years of wear and tear and bound on a lay flat binding so you can use every inch of it. And of course, us being us, we add amazing artwork from across the Pathfinder universe, as well as our own custom pieces, commissioned specifically for this book. And that's why I'm here today, to introduce you to Beetle and Grimm's complete character chronicle. Character sheet, rule book, journal, all in one. The tools to tell your story and the pages to preserve. If my story had been included in one of these, I'm pretty sure that Beetle, the greatest dungeon delver ever, would have been the true hero of the group. Not Bodum, not Tanner, and definitely not Grimm. Because it all would have been written down, the incontestable truth. Or at least, a well-documented lie. Which is just as good. I'm Matthew Lillard, and we are Beetle and Grimm. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Beetle and Grimm's Home Shopping Network. Today, Shipping Goblin George here is going to let you know about the amazing selection of officially licensed Dungeons & Dragons jewelry that we've made available. Yes, Waterdeep shiny faction tokens, shiny dragon coins, mm. oh, shiny, shiny shark medallion. <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Oh, and here's an update. As a special offer for today only, we don't sell 10 pieces by the end of this commercial, George and I will both be killed. Seriously? Not to worry. 10 very reasonably priced pieces of D&D jewelry is not a problem. I, I'm sure no one wants us to die. <laughs> How much money you got on you? Oh, uh, uh, bones? Lint, more bones. Come on, 15 bucks for three dragon pieces. It, it, we get the ball rolling. Oh, okay, okay. Ooh, more bones. $15. Dollars. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was saving that for lunch. Oh, sale number one, baby. Here we go. <laughs> Dam's broken. Let's go. Oh, <clears throat>
<laughs> Run! Hello, and welcome to Band of Badgers. My name's Joe, and I am the DM for our game of Tomb of Annihilation by Wizards of the Coast. Um, these are my lovely players. So say hello, players. Hi. Hello. 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 We, 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 oh. You won't see us yet. To, to be a good remind day. people like, yes. that we're fixing things. Oh, yeah. Yes. So we, we, we had a, a last minute stand in, and uh, we're just going to be shifting some uh, screens around. Um, so people are maybe a bit cut up or in odd <laughs> positions at the minute. Yeah, so you just have to duck down so you can be seen. <laughs> um, so yeah, <laughs> the magic of Twitch. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Gareth um, is is uh, not feeling very well, uh, unfortunately. Um, so we've got Lee to stand in. Uh, Hi. So she's back again. Hi. Yes. Um, we also have um, Josh uh, from the Maguire Review. Um, How are you doing? Yeah, so he's um, he's uh, graciously decided to join us. Um, he previously played on our. <laughs> no one now. Game. This has gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> shoom, shoom. Now we got double view. We got double vision. Shoom. See, uh, we you know Gareth Sarkis. Yes. Yeah, so, so, and I can't change the name now either. So you are. You are yeah, going to be are. forever you known as well, well, you know, this is how you know it's going to be a good one. Right? I mean, yeah, is, yeah. It starts you mean to go on. This is right. TV. This is how you do it. Yeah. There we go. Um, on the fly. So, do it live. So, yeah, it's, uh, Sarkis Gareth is unfortunately not feeling very well. Um, so, yeah, Lee's, Lee stepped in. Uh, oh. in. You, you know I'm going to have to fix the other screen as well. <laughs> what other screen? The, map the, the, the battle map screen. We're gonna have to shift that around as well. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Gareth, that's your first warning. <laughs> <laughs> that's your first <laughs> slap. Well, well, Dave, while you guys are doing that, do you want me to queue up the giveaway? Yes. That we will. Uh, that we'll have for uh, uh, midstream yeah. here when we do the Go ahead. interview. Well, we we got one screen done, so we'll, we'll we'll have to work with that. But okay, so tonight. The giveaway will be the Thieves Guild. Now, uh, obviously, this is a Dungeons and Dragons stream, and this is a, a branded Pathfinder item, but that's okay because any of these types of things are totally reusable for uh, pretty much any type of RPG experience. So, it is the Thieves Guild. Um, there will be some pictures that you'll be able to see here uh, up on the promos there, you know, or you can go and kind of open another browser and check it out if you're interested. Really cool item, and this set has a number of very, very cool uh, specific items. Really unique items in this set. It's a really awesome, one. and it has light up features. A lot of these uh, Whiz Kids sets do have the light up features. So where you put the little uh, fire, it's got some little fire uh, brazers or whatever. You, you you put those on the altar, and it actually flickers and lights up. And it's got an altar in it, so that's perfect for uh, Tomb of Annihilation. So that that'll be the giveaway midstream. Stay tuned for that. Uh, you don't want to miss that one. Yeah, so we doing that uh, in the halftime break. Yeah, we'll do we'll do that halftime break. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, unless uh, you want to wait until the end, it's up to you. No, I think yeah, guys. I think we do it at the at halftime. Um, so yeah, we'd also like to say a, a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, Beadle and Grimm and uh, Gale Force Nine. Um, I know that Beadle and Grimm's uh, Kickstarter's out now, so go over there and, and check that out. Um, so we've also, uh, through Band of Badgers, have uh, sorted out some uh, discount codes for you. And you should see those just scrolling uh, through below. So go check those out also. Um, please remember to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can check out all of our previous Tomb Annihilation uh, games and see Lee and the rest of the uh, party in the last session as they battled their way up Firefinger. Um, so yeah. And also, if you've got the ability to do so, if you can support us here using your Twitch Prime, that would also be great. Um, so thank you for doing so in advance. 
Uh, let's have a look. Could people start having a look in chat and seeing have, if there's any? You, Joe, have you, you mentioned why while while you've got some lipstick on? Why? Because <laughs> it's Halloween, my friend. Oh, that, there we go. Oh. <laughs> People well, just, I thought, I thought was, uh... we were just going to not mention it. No, <laughs> this is this is my usual Friday night face. I don't, yeah, yeah. Casual uh, <laughs> night at the club. Yeah, I just yeah. tone it down for you guys normally, but you know, <laughs> this is just Sorry. a whole look. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said in um, in our, our group chat, um, if anyone that's in no, not Pennywise, Chuff, I know you're wrong. Um, if anyone can guess uh, where this outfit is from then you get inspiration other than the pie <laughs> and if anyone else can guess that dave is the invisible man oh you yeah, told yeah, them they... oh you <laughs> 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 i was gonna <laughs> wait and see how many people were gonna talk about it oh, I, I couldn't tell if that was a technical, that was a technical difficulty <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I My you apologies. Had so much else to deal with that I would just let that slide for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yep. I, am, I am the Invisible Man. So, uh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, guys, have a um, keep an eye out in chat, uh, and if anyone gets it right, let them let them know. But um, if not, I'll tell tell them at the halftime break. Oh. Yes. Um, so yeah, if uh, who have we got in chat? There's a few people in chat. I can't. I can I see it at the minute for some reason. One of my Is friends it? just messaged me. Hello, we got uh, Will, mate of ours. Hello, Will. Thank you for. I think you um, subscribed as well. So big thank you for that as well. Um, ah, it's come up now. Let's see what else we got. Uh. Chav Hunter, obviously. Uh, Tawan Matamazaz. I can't say half of these people have literally probably like. Smash, smash, smash. Yeah, look like they've headbutted the keyboard to get their username. (laughs) Uh, Uh, Kota Flash, uh, 2005. Uh, John Muller's in as well. Oh, nice. Hey, John. Hi, John. John. I'm waving. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sean uh, TW's in as well. Um, Sean made this amazing drawing behind me that you can see, um, along with uh, some other artwork, um, including the Aliens uh, T-shirt that's on our um, merchandise page as well. So go check out those. That's amazing. Hi, Sean. Sarah Noss. Doing your double thumbs up there. Yeah, big thumbs up for Sean. Yeah, if, yeah. And, and, and I'll just I'll just second that. If you haven't checked out his stuff. Go check him out. He did Silic and Bear as well from the Pathfinder stream. It's really, really awesome artwork. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Yeah, and uh, Sean, if you're listening, just drop your like. If you've got an Instagram or, or what have you, just drop it into chat so people can can follow you on there as well. Yeah, yeah. and I'll also give a shout out to uh, give a shout out to Ryan as well with uh, Session Zero going with the Minotaur tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, good, good. <laughs> as you can see, I'm wearing my Minotaur as well because I can't see, they, they're wearing, they can wrap. only see a chair. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm still in costume. That's why <laughs> I am the invisible. I am. I, I'm not naked. I am wearing the Session Zero Minotaur top. I yeah. just happen to be currently the Invisible Man. That's that's <laughs> that's amazing. the entire gag for this session. This is our Halloween Nobody's special. Where only the DM dressed up, <laughs> <laughs> and and the guest that joined oh, us literally and five the guest before we went yeah. live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's have a look. Right. So, um, could one of you maybe give us a summary of of what happened last Ooh. session? Um, if Corp wants to do it again, that'd be cool. Corp and the diary. Court diary, page two. <laughs> Cork and Co. found big fire finger, big thing with fire on top. We found friend at bottom of it. We found Jessica, half elf ranger. We found Jessica's friends. They were in pieces. We... In pieces. Do you know? Do you know who you remind me of? So I'm. I'm going to interrupt now. But do you know who? Remind me... Have you seen Frozen Two? 
No. Right, watch Frozen wow. 2. Olaf does a fantastic recap of Frozen 1. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all I've got in my head now. <laughs> that is all I can see is Cork doing. Oh, oh, no, to watch and then it did. oh no, and then it came back to life. <laughs> I thought he was going to say he did a fantastic cork. <laughs> we should, we should, we should right. get him on. What? Anyway, carry went, on. Went through Firefinger. Fire Climbed up tower, fought spiders, fought big birds, cork smash birds. Made it to top of tower, saw last of Jessica's friends. Jimmy, no! <laughs> Made haphazard attempt to save Jimmy. Jimmy went splat. Uh, defeated birds, got items, got magic robe with many items. And got feather, which allows people to float slowly. Now, uh, uh, from top of tower, we were able to see big heart-shaped rock and frog rock. Seamus wants to go frog rock. We go frog rock now. Frog rock. Guys, where's Sark? <laughs> <laughs> he and I switched, and he's going to go back and talk about Jimmy. Um, yeah, that's it. He's going to break the news to Jimmy's family. Yeah, yeah. We left. We left behind the wrong elf. Train elves. I'm only oh, half the, the man that he is, so <laughs> have to make do. So yeah, from from Firefinger, you could see this large frog-shaped um, statue. Uh, jutting out of the tree line and it's taken you around five days to get to this this large frog-like statue and you, you as you come towards it there's a, a, a hedgerow that that's about nine to ten foot high and it's basically a maze that that takes you pretty much the whole art like morning to traverse and, and once you do so, you, you you find yourself standing in front of this massive frog-shaped stone plinth that's in the middle of this moton um, pond. And before you, there's just the sign, the, the scene of chaos and and just battle. And there's undead beasts of, of various nature, so zombies and um creatures that look like uh apes but with multiple limbs um just traversing through the water um towards the the statue standing outside of the statue there's a number of frog shaped um humanoids that are trying to fend off these these undead um to your left there's a uh, a familiar looking creature uh, in the form of a turtle that is also fighting a four limbed um, gorilla ape type creature. Um, and yeah, the sounds of battle is just all over the place. So, yeah. And um, that's what you'll be able to now see on your map. So you've got. Okay. A number of uh, you zombies. You tell me to switch the and, screens again and. Yeah, so unfortunately, <laughs> you will need to figure out uh, uh, switch up the screens and, and and do whatnot. So if the audience can bear with us one moment whilst we do so, um, yeah, you're, you're well, we can. So so we we've got the sounds of the battle. So I can I, I I'm assuming these are grungs. Is that right? They are, yeah. So the yeah. the um, the frog creatures are grungs, and um, everything else is either zombies or okay. undead of some sort or, the, or another. So, because you know of my life's training on this, I can speak grung. Is there anything I can pick out, or is it just chaos, chaotic sounds? Yes, yeah. yeah so fine. it's it's, okay. it's almost like you know war. War. Like <sighs> okay, <fine. laughs> um, the sort of thing that you'd hear people shouting. Um, <clears throat> during a battle. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess we need to attack the undead. Uh, you know, this is my this is my life's work. I can't get let it get uh, 
overrun by uh, by zombies. How's that? Um, you see everyone? I've... Uh, yeah, it looks it looks all good. How deep oh. is the water uh, directly in front of us? So you can you could estimate based upon the the creature that's walking across it, this this large uh, zombie ogre zombie in front of you, uh, that it only comes up to just above his sort of knees. So it doesn't look oh, okay. too deep, and and that that creature is in the the middle where you would assume the the deepest portion to be. This is this is where none of this shows up on the map. Look, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as you can see, no, the audience cannot see. There we go. That's all right. Put me there we go. Okay. Right. Cork we has his maul on the fly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Cork's got his maul out. Yeah, so if if you're wanting to to attack, um, then you just need to um, roll initiative. Okay, so remember to select your characters before you roll initiative. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Did I? Yeah, I rolled a natural 20. Oh, I'm so oh, good. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the only one of the game got. <laughs> Not for me. There's a natural one. Oh, on <laughs> Wait, I get to I get to re-roll that, don't I? Does right. my does my halfling luck count on uh, inspiration rolls? No. Uh, don't know what rolls. I'm um, it says lucky. Oh, no. An attack roll, ability check, or saving roll. Guess not then. <laughs> we found we found your weakness. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Uh, lost my character. Jessica rolled an eleven. So mm -hmm. what you can do is do you see where it says turn order on your screen on the left? Uh, yeah, wherever yeah. it might be. Uh, if you select the zero <gasps> I got it. <laughs> I beat the zombies natural twenty. The purple dice <laughs> come in come into play again. <laughs> Those purple Perfect. dice, yeah, man. That's it. I have plus two to your plus one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that one has a minus two. Excellent. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, so, has everybody rolled? We all. We have. Uh, so, I'm just gonna add. I just need to add the zombie, and then uh, I think we're good to go. Natural one, amazing. Yes. <laughs> Matt, you're not going dead last. <laughs> How's that? Excellent. How's that working? Well, so far. well, he gets. Uh, He's on minus one because he's got a minus one to his initiative. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I don't know. He's got a minus two to it. Amazing. I have a good feeling about this, guys. Yeah. Right. right. Cork, very happy to see combat, flies into an immediate rage as a bonus action. Cool. And uh, is this difficult terrain to go forward? Uh, yeah, so walking through the water is, it, it, when you step into it, it's almost like swamp type, um, rather than actual water, it's really sort of murky and cruddy. Um, so yeah, it would be difficult terrain to traverse over the water, but you can step into it. Okay, so that's moving half speed, isn't it? It is, yes. I'm not going to reach him. That's a bugger. Right. Okay. Uh, if I dash, that's both my actions, isn't it? It is, yes. So I've done a bonus action to... Yeah, let's go for it. So I'm just going to dash straight up. So one, two, three... Oh, hang on a second. Each of the squares are five, aren't they? Five foot. Yes, yeah, they are. Five, ten, fifteen. And then I will end up 
right there and ready ready to just basically be hit <laughs> <laughs> nice and charged into the water went slow move quicker <laughs> 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 Angrily, angrily stomping his way through the mud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the uh, large um, four-armed um, ape zombie is up. They're up next, and the first one is going to move to the, the foot of the stairs, and the other one is going to uh, hit Lars. Um, who is on the left hand side here, the other turtle. Um, so he first of all is going to try and claw at you. Uh, so he grabs hold of you with his arms. Uh, it's only the uh, one dice, even though it rolls two. Uh, so nine, I'm assuming a nine doesn't hit you. Nope. Uh, but uh, that's only with one of its arms. Um, it then, with its second, tries to claw you once more uh, for a 25. I'm assuming that hits. Definitely hits. Yeah. Um, for six damage. Okay. So, yeah, that one just comes and smashes down into your side of your shelf and sort of makes you, uh, your ears almost ring a bit. Um, and then it's going to do the same with its other two claws as well. Uh, 18. It hits. Guys, Lars is dead already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Thank um, you for joining us, Josh. It was uh, lovely to... Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's been fun, guys. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll take the giveaway and... <laughs> 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 He died as he lived. Um, the yeah. sixth damage, but um, if you remember, we we discussed that you would uh, already be enraged, so you will I'm be taking enraged. half half damage for each of these attacks. So. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Then it's yeah. half damage while I'm enraged. Uh, yeah, for any non magical, I think it is, or non uh, slashing blood, slashing bludgeoning, piercing. Yeah. Yeah, I have resistance. Okay. <laughs> So how many was that in total? How many was the second? Uh, so he got six both times, so it'd be six in total. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then it's your turn, actually, to, to hit him back. So yeah, he just beats you a couple of times with, with two of his arms, but the other two are unable to, to find you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come back strong and uh, hit him with my mouth. We will roll for that. And that's a 16 to hit. Uh, a 16 does hit. Yep. Okay, perfect. And that's, uh, I'm raging, so that's uh, 12 plus 2, 14 points of damage. Nice. Yeah. And I do get a second attack as well. Mm hmm. Twenty-four to hit. Yeah, hits. That's it. Very good. Eleven points of damage. Nice. Cool. So yeah, but you just hitting it. And it's <laughs> just in its side, just smashing your maul into the side of it repeatedly. And uh, yeah, he's still standing. Uh, but you do hear as you cr you crack into its side, you hear like ribs cracking. Um, and, and and whatnot. So, uh, Obo, you're up. Okay, can I, from my vantage point, can I see this other turtle? Yeah, it's um, it's bright skies, open open area. So you would be able to see the other turtle fighting with this um, zombie over in the corner here. This ape zombie. Hey guys, like there's, there seems to be another turtle over there. I'm, I'm just gonna you, you wait here, like, and I'll I'll go and help that one because it looks like it might be in some trouble. Okay, and I'll go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I'll go full movement speed, thirty feet mm -hmm. in that direction. Yep, and I'll get my crossbow ready, um, and I'll take a pot shot if I can. 
Yeah, sure. Do, 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 do. Do. Oh, now I've got to go back to my map and submit. Uh, oh, that's a miss. Eight to yeah, hit. unfortunately, uh, it, it doesn't hit. Um, it just goes flying off past uh, the, the ape zombie into the, the hedgerow. Okay. That's it. That's my turn. Uh, Jessica, you're up. Uh, I'm going to try my longbow at the one uh, that Quirk is hitting. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, or smiling at. Yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Core quad angry hug. Yes. All right. Um, six. Ten. Uh, ten does not hit. Oh well. Unfortunately. Uh. Oh, sorry. It has an arm plus eight. So yes, it, that does hit. My oh, back. Okay. I was looking at the uh, the other one. And then two piercing. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, you draw back your your longbow and and let it fly, and uh, it, it goes whizzing past Cork's head, and just sticks into the back of this this ogre. Oh hey, I hit one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good job. Why do, why do people keep firing arrows near cork? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Azrael, you're up. Okay, I'm going to move myself centrally. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to uh, use my feline agility to uh, double move. So I'm going to put myself out there somewhere. Um, I've got two targets, so I'm going to uh, shoot an arrow at the one that our uh, additional tool is, is fighting at the moment. So I'm going to knock an arrow to my bow, draw back, and, and take aim. Mm -hmm. Just me or press that button. Sorry. So the arrow flies uh, in armor class uh, 24. Yeah. Good hit. And does an almighty nine points of damage. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that puts an arrow firmly uh, in that one. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to drop uh, Bernie, everybody's favourite purple dinosaur, <laughs> to the zombie that Cork is fighting, please. Sure. Give me two ones. Uh... Dino friend is back. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to resize him. Oh no, there we go. There. Uh, uh, let me Perfect. Let me give you the ability to move him as well. <laughs> Dave, Jurassic Cork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I rolled my attack. Uh, I hit an armor class of eight. Uh, that hits, yep. <laughs> Wow. Awesome. That's something that is one of two hits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that does that does an mighty ten points of damage as the big glowing purple dinosaur takes a chunk out of the uh, the, the zombie ogre's shoulder. Nice. And and that's my go over. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So I think seeing I think Lars and uh Lars and Obo and Azrael have got Got that other one on the left uh, tied up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sprint straight for Cork, the one by Cork. Um, so I'm gonna spend a key point um, and get double uh, double movement on my um, step of the wind, um, and so I will make it all the way up up to Cork there. And so with my quarter staff, I will smash. What did you say it was? Uh, it's an ogre zombie. An ogre zombie. I will smash the ogre zombie in its knees because you know I'm only small. Yeah. Um, so uh, where is it? Um... <clears throat> ah, so that is an eleven yeah, total. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that would be for seven bludgeoning damage. Um, and then I think I think that's it because I don't think I get another bonus. 
uh, guys, I don't think I can do my uh, unarmed thing as well. So yeah, I think I think that's it. So yeah, you sort of skim the wall with your your start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I'm yeah. a, you know I'm on tippy toes. I'm just you know <laughs> whoo, uh, you know desperately trying to to stop the water being dragging. Yeah. Oh, so the uh, the the zombie uh, ogre turns to you. Uh, oh, good. And, <laughs> and, and sort of looks in a vacant way, uh -huh. and then um, just basically brings around this massive morning star and just whacks it towards Cork. Um, oh. oh God! All the dice. <laughs> That's a yeah. lot of dice. Uh, the the twenty five is the one we're taking, or the natural twenty, because the oh, natural thank God. one. <laughs> Only a nineteen. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. gonna hit. <laughs> um, oh, 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 hello. <laughs> that's uh, a lot of yeah, two d eight plus four. I think it's already rolled the bludgeoning. So you've hit yeah. me for thirteen plus nine. That's it. Excellent. <laughs> Not half that. <laughs> So, yeah, so he just swings around this morning <laughs> bar and just smashes you straight in the chest with it. Um, Quick math, 13 plus 9. Uh, is 22. 22. So you take 11 points of damage instead. Yeah. And the, the zombies, um, only one of them actually moves and that's up towards the wall. Um, they are all just trying to clamber up the side of this mm -hmm. uh, cliff face. Okay. Um, um, they're, they're quite focused on the grungs that are above them, but obviously not clever enough to understand that they need to get up the steps. Um, so they're currently just Classic scratching zombies. at the walls, yeah. as, as a zombie would do. Yeah. Uh, Cork, your turn. Cork is going to hit that. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, my great reckless mauling, which is uh, minus five to hit, but with advantage, and then giving you advantage on hitting me. So. Cool. And then if I hit, it's plus 10. 17. Yeah, hits. <laughs> I see you're 22. I raise you 23. <laughs> right. well, that's a good hit. Yeah. Basically, Cork is just in like a contest of just enjoying being hit while smacking back. Mm. And just, hit me! <laughs> yeah, so what, do you just whack him in the chest again? Or are you... Um... Uh, as he's come down and hit me, I've returned fire and gone for the head. Nice. I've, minor technical question. Mm -hmm. Can Cork ride the dinosaur? <laughs> it's only a floating head, and I think it's um, I don't think it's actually there from what I understand of the spell. But, um... You're definitely misunderstanding the spell. Oh, really? I can't oh. remember what, what the... have you got the spell there? Yes, and it definitely says Cork may ride the dinosaur. Does it really? It's, 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 yeah, it's minutes when I type that in the description. Yeah, yeah. It specifically mentions those exact words. <laughs> what Cork may <laughs> ride yeah, 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 the yeah, dinosaur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cork is. Uh... Oh, can Cork go on top of the dinosaur, please? <laughs> 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 cool oh, weapon, no. doesn't it? Um... DM. Can call it on the dinosaur, it's, a special, it's a special weapon, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I said, until I edit that description, it's, it's a special weapon. <laughs> yeah, quickly typing, caught by the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember to put the coin in the machine first. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coin operated dinosaurs, excellent. Um, do you have any more attacks? or is uh... Uh, I just have the one attack. Okay. So that's me cool. done. Uh, so this uh, first uh, zombie uh, Gerulian here is going to move up and attack this grung. Um, 
and as it does so, it literally just smashes it into the ground with all four of its limbs and just makes this pummeling, squelching noise as this uh, frog creature just gets smushed into the ground. And um... But the thing is, when he does so, as he's smashing it, all the blood starts spraying onto the the body of this uh, zombie and the fur starts to singe and sizzle um, and you, you sort of see him reel back um, in, in a bit of pain as he does so. Um, the the other one uh, is once again going to try and attack uh, our friend Lars. So before we do that, can Lars from his vantage point see See, see this actually happen yes so yeah you'd be able to see up here because it's a raised platform um that is visible from from the outside uh, edge of the wall of okay. side of the bank all right well if lars can see this lars will will, will kind of look and, and yell no little frog buddy <laughs> as you do so uh the oh, other i, think, I, think I recognize that voice like is that is that lars Lars, is that you, man? I'm kind of tied up right now. (laughs) Hold on a sec. I'll be there when I can. Like, (laughs) you carry on. As you're talking, the uh, the the Jirinian zombie just smashes you uh, around the back of the shell because you sort of half turn around to to talk to Obo. And um... oh shit! (laughs) I bet that fucking happened. Oh, no, ignore that damage. But the first one uh, is seven, so run down, so you take three. And then the uh, the, the following uh, hand also smashes into you. Is a 17 hit? Uh, that's the armor class, yep. Uh, for an additional two damage. Okay. Um... And then the following two arms uh, also come pounding down on towards you. Uh, the first one misses you, and and the second one also swipes at, at air, and and unfortunately, or for lucky for yourself, doesn't manage to hit you. Uh, so yeah, you get to now attack back if you wish to do so. Okay, um, right before I'm ready to attack, uh, ha ha, miss me there, you big guy. I turn around and, and look at. Uh... Uh, look at uh, look at Obo and hey, what's up, Cuz? You loser! Ha <laughs> ha! And then I'm going to. Oh, and then I'm yeah, going fuck to, it is. <laughs> and then I'm going to attack uh, with I'll the mall again. Adjust my aim. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll roll for that hit. Yeah, it's a fifteen to hit. Uh, that hits. Yep. Okay. And that's going to be 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Nice. Second attack. 23 to hit. Yeah, hits. And another 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, how would you like to do this? Mm-hmm. Oh, Lars is going to like take a step back after just that final crushing blow to the head. And just lift up one of his enormously muscular legs and just kick it over and then take that mile right over the top and, and just yell, Buster comes down! <laughs> and just nail it right in the chest, just cave the chest in. Cool. So, yeah, as you do so, the, the zombie's uh, guts are just come kind of flying out everywhere um, and sort of splat up your, the front of you. Um, and, and, yeah, yeah. Headishes. Nice. So, do you have any uh, oh. other attacks or anything else that you need to do? That's it. Nice. Hey, Lars, 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 man, Lars, there's, there's more over there. Like, just, just keep going. I'll catch up. Yeah. Yeah, we'll catch up in a minute, buddy. All right, dudes. All right. I should have brought, brought more turtles with me. <sighs> Um, so actually, yeah. Then, then maybe I can move. Famous, is he Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? 
Yes, Cork. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cork, Cork breaks through the fourth wall there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, huh? Well, <laughs> At, at this stage, I just say yes to most things Cork says. It's easier that way. Oh, no, yes. I've turned him into Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cork is a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> okay, so I went ahead and I went ahead and, uh, went ahead and moved up. Yep, cool. Uh, so, yeah, Obo, you're up. Okay, so I, I'll change direction. And I'll kind of, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 takes me back to there. Mm -hmm. And is this all shallow water? Because I can see everyone in the water. It is. Um, I forgot to say, if you've, have you got swim speed as at all? Or do you not have a swim uh, speed? I have no idea. I have yeah. no idea where swim speed would be. I play uh. Pathfinder. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a shame. Then you that's don't. Um... <laughs> <laughs> then you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I can swim. Yeah. yeah but I, was... I don't think turtles are, are any. I think they're swim swimmers. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. It says, uh, yeah, turtles are not natural swimmers, but they can remain underwater for some time. Um, so you have yeah. a hold breath of up to an hour, but no specific swim speed. I'll there you go. Okay. So it's still, it's still difficult terrain for you. Okay. Well, I'll take a step in, and if that's not too deep, then I will shoot at the uh, zombie ogre monkey thing. Yep. Okay, so I'll need to queue this up again. Uh, that one, that one. That's, uh, that's, a, that's an 11. That's bound to be a mess as well, isn't it? Uh, no, it hits. Oh, okay, so uh, that one. Five points of damage. So oh, aim and just aim above Cork's head. So yeah, another another arrow comes whizzing over <laughs> Cork's head. This one sort of making his hair almost fluff up for a second. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Jessica, you're yeah. up. I'm well, going I think to another one. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will warn him this time. Assume the position. <laughs> <laughs> and shout, duck as I let go. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nineteen. Yeah, hits. Four, uh, which is six piercing. Cool. So yeah, another another arrow whizzes past Cork's head and, and digs straight into the back of this uh, this ogre zombie. Uh, but so yeah, he's he's now got sort of four, three or four arrows sort of sticking out of him at various places, but it doesn't seem to hurt him at all when he's he's still very angry and looming over the top of Seamus and Cork. And Azrael, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna get uh, get Bernie to take another chomp down on the ogre zombie, if I may. Yep. So roll to hit. Uh, where's me floating in the gun? That's a uh, sixteen to hit for Bernie. Yeah, hits. <clears throat> Does eight points of damage. Nice. Um, probably should have done this first, but I'm gonna. Uh, Move him around the back as well, um, uh, and then I'm going to look up and I, I see that other four-armed zombie that the other turtle took down that uh, Obo seems to be shouting at, and he's attacking these frog creatures that seem pretty defenseless. So I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to knock a special arrow. Um, this one is blunt and has a symbol of a bell carved into the shaft. I'm going to shoot it across uh, across the pond here in his direction. It, it, hums and vibrates and make this sort of bell sound as it approaches the creature. So can you make me a wisdom save and throw, please, as I cast um, Toll the Dead. Nice. Uh, so that's right. a DC of 14. Take the left one. Also. Um, two. So I'm assuming no. 
that that's a fail. Uh, so let me see if I've done this correctly. Uh, yeah, one point damage. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I take it, it it hasn't been damaged at all, has it? Because I was it. Uh, it, it has, yes. Right. Okay. In that case, it's it's D twelve damage. Okay. Uh, so that's five five points of damage. Is that on top of the one, or is that? No, no. That's that's uh, that's five. Okay. Yeah, if if they're running in, injured, they take uh, D8. Yeah. If it, if they're injured, they take D twelve. I should have asked that question first. No, that's fine. Um, so, yeah. And I'll, I'll stay w where I am for now to reset my feline agility. Um, I have to stay stationary for a whole round to do that. Cool. Pork uh, hears the bell and his stomach rumbles. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pavlov's dog. Yeah. Pa Pavlov's cork. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, all right. So, uh, how big is this thing in front of me and cork? Uh, it is a uh, a large creature. Okay. Um, All right. So I am gonna uh, run run round um, uh, run round the other side like so. Um, and as I'm as I as I run round it uh, again with my quarter scarf, I'm gonna just uh, try and smack it uh, again in the in the you know the knee upper thigh area, skimming mm -hmm. across the water. Um, and uh, it'll be that one. Uh, so that's uh, 18 to hit um, yep. with uh, 11 points of damage um, oh. and, and so yeah so then this time um, I can use my unarmed attack so I'm going to um, uh, somehow uh, leap up out of the water and uh, pummel it with my legs um, and that is going to do um Eight points of damage. Nice. Um, and that is damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's me done. Cool. So you, that was um, with your legs. Did you say you were? Punching yeah, yeah. My legs. Him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I leapt up out of the water, um, gave some kind of battle cry, and uh, yeah, just um, mash, 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 but with my legs. Cool. Yeah, so he's looking very worse for wear, um, but is still still standing, currently sort of swaying backwards and forwards. Um, the the grungs, uh, frog-like creatures at the the top, um, draw some small um, blow blow pipes and start blowing darts at the the zombies down below and at the, the large ape creature on on the top as well, um, sort of peppering them with shots. Uh, uh, but the ogre zombie uh, still quite fixated on on cork um, turns to him and <laughs> this one with advantage is that right? Yeah, yeah. Hit me harder. Oh wow! <coughs> wow! Shit! Double, <laughs> double nat twenties. <laughs> double nat twenties again. <laughs> Those it's dice, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you need to um you need to get a quicker Steve to get the uh, the good dice. <laughs> get the special <laughs> dice. <laughs> oh well. So much for your advantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you take what uh, 12 damage? 12. Yes. Um out of yes. curiosity, Seamus. Mm. What trait did you take? We up? Oh, I took. Um, you mean feet? I took two points yeah. of uh, constitution. Okay. Did you did you have sentinel as your thing before that, or was that? A... Um, yeah, to... I have. Oh, yeah, no, I have sentinel. So um, ah. he's he's attacked corp, and you're standing next to him, which means you get a free. Oh yeah, free I do. I get a free attack. Attack of opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Good shout. Um, cork, cork, cork looks at Seamus and goes, he's hitting me! <laughs> Do something, you fool! <laughs> cool. Uh, I will. I will. Uh, do, yeah, that's a, that's a 12, so that hits. Yeah, it hits. Um, and then um, 12 damage. Um, and then do I get my unarmed attack as well? You don't need to. Oh, 
Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, so as uh, as this um, zombie thing is attacking my body, cork, um, I uh, yeah, I, uh, I I grab my mace, uh, my quarter staff, I mean, and um, yeah, just kind of run up its body and um, just smash it uh, in its head, and it just kind of splatters and goes like that. So it lands in the water, and a big like wave just laps over both you and Cork. Um, drowning you in muddy, stinky water. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, once again, the zombies don't really seem to be t- paying much attention to you, um, but they they all do seem to the the arrows that that have been fired into them from the grunt seem to be sort of hissing and letting off a, a, a sort of faint wisps of of smoke. Um, and uh, Cork, you're up. Well, why stop a good thing? Cork is going to head up to the next biggest zombie and stand and look at it and smile. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can go 10, 20, 30, and then dash, 40. He's hit the steps. So 45, 50, 55, 60. And he's going to stand there and say, Hit me! <laughs> Because I have a death wish, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's what he does. He just sees you coming up the stairs and, and almost turns to um, to, to greet you. Um, Hug. And <laughs> as you get as you get nearer to him, you, you notice that as he opens his mouth, there's these two large tusks that, that come out the side of his mouth. Um, and, and the creature almost seems to be grinning at you as you climb up the stairs. Um, and he, as you get near him, he tries to bite you. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, 12? Oh, no, you, you don't have advantage. So this no. is great. You do not, you do not bite me. <laughs> um, but then he also then, as he goes to bite you, he also tries to smash you with both of his paws. Um, on all of his <laughs> hands. So I'm assuming a 24 hits. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's and you're still raging, so yes. this is all going to be half half damage. Yeah. <laughs> um, from each of oh. his arms. Dear God. I'll just do all of the, uh, the the attack rolls, and we'll do the damage after. So that was a natural 20. I know. <laughs> You've hit me with all of them. Yes. Jesus so. <laughs> So that's five damage for the first one, so two. Uh, I thought the first one did eight slashing already. I've already done that. Uh, uh, sorry, for the second one then. Um, so that'd be two. Yeah, done. Um, and then <laughs> the next one is going to be uh, so eight. Seven plus so one. Okay. Four. Bring it. Come on. Keep going. <laughs> 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 and then the last one's another two damage. So they're just like clawing at your chest. As Guys, you, as you come do it. not to worry you, I'm now just below half health. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it is but a scratch. <laughs> I, I'd have been dead twice. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't no, great no. in half damage, I would be dead. <laughs> yeah. Also, as you got closer to it, you can see that all of its fur on the front of it is all sort of singed off and it's starting to, to melt away. And, and sort of bits of his skin is, is falling from it. Um, so, yeah. Uh. Okay, so how how high is cork in this beast, kind of from ground level? So how high is that ledge? Uh, the the um, steps up are uh, 10, 10 foot high. Okay. All right, so I can get a thrown weapon. All mm-hmm. right, so Lars... Um, Lars is going to swim up the best that, that he can, uh, 20 feet. <coughs> okay. And then um, he's going to pull out one of his uh, javelins. He's going to reach around his, his back. He's got some javelins like attached to uh, the shell in the back part. Pull out one of those javelins and chuck the javelin at the, uh, the monster that is engaged with Cork. Cool. Nineteen to hit. Yeah, hits. Excellent. Okay. 
that is seven. Oh, so that's nine points of damage. I'm still raging. Yep. Nice. And just so everybody knows, um, my rage, I I do have ancestral protectors that are activated. So the first hit on this creature, now this creature has disadvantage on everybody else it attacks. Cool. And <laughs> and yeah and haha yeah excellent and uh, whatever damage that creature is doing against the player, that player then becomes resistant to that damage type. Ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Can I be doubly resistant? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Okay, so that is activated against that. Only cool. that creature. That disadvantage is going to help. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I very not much. And how, um, how long does that um, resistance last? Um, that lasts as long as I'm raging. Okay, fine, cool. So we got quite a few more rounds. Yeah, sure. Cool. cool. Um, and then I can't attack. I can't attack twice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck another one of my javelins, which it looks like I only have two on hand. So this will be the last javelin that I'll chuck. And it's seventeen to hit. Yeah, hits. And another 10 points of piercing damage. Nice. Two good hits. Cool. So, yeah, two javelins just lodge in its back as it's looking at Cork. And it sort of jolts as they do so. Um, and it, it, it starts to sort of reach around using its bottom limbs to try and pull them out of its back. Yeah, and then I, I scream... I scream, ha oh, ha, yeah, Lars throws the pointy sticks too. Boo! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's only because I was over here, Lars. It's, it's, you wait till I get up there. I'm just, I'm just having a paddle. You're going to have to catch up, Obo. <laughs> How are these two cousins? <laughs> <laughs> so, Obo, you're up. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I will move up and I will do what everyone else is doing. I can see this big monster attacking uh, my new friend, Quark. I will steady my aim on the crossbow and I will take a, another pop shot. Let's see if that works. <gasps> 18. Yeah, hits. Here we go. Oh, three points of damage. Nice. So yeah, yeah again. As uh, it logs in the brain and dies. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not. Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, once again, Cork, I think he's probably going to get some sort of complex about you guys firing arrows at him shortly. Um, <laughs> as, as soon as that natural one appears. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, more arrows just flying past Cork and embedding into the creatures that he's standing in front of. Javelins are just giant arrows. They are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Jessica, you're up. Uh, I think I have to move to get any sort of good hit on him. So uh, I'm not sure how far I can go. Uh, so it's basically half speed through the water. Okay, so I see uh, it's 30. So you can move three squares. Great. Yeah. Oh, well. it, it's caught really there. well running up to these big monsters and then not hitting. Yeah. <laughs> Three little squares? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, there I am. And then I will go ahead and see if my longbow is close enough. Yeah, it should be. All right. Look, 50 away. That's yeah, another 19. Okay. Yeah, hits. I'm doing all right today. <clears throat> and that's three piercing. Nice. Ding! Yeah, the, once again, another arrow whizzes past Cork and, uh, and embeds into the side of this uh, giant four limbed ape creature. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, coming again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Azriel, you're Okay, I shall send in Bernie to uh, back Cork up so he can move 20 feet 
Um, so that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty should be there. Uh, mm-hmm. He obviously doesn't need to use the stairs because he's a no. special weapon. <laughs> So he's going to take another chump at the four-on beastie that is giving Cork a bit of a hard time. Mm-hmm. Try and get some revenge. So, roll some dice. And that's a 21 to hit. Yeah, hit. Oh, that'll do it. A nice. Big old chump down on, on its meaty calf. Eight points of damage, please. Nice, yeah. So you just, the, your, your dinosaur just rips a big chunk of flesh out of the side of this uh, creature. Um, I'm not sure whether it would eat it and it would swallow it, or whether it would uh, just spit it out. <laughs> uh, try, try and swallow it, but it'd probably just like drop out the bottom. Fall, fall it's through like... its neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm, I'm going to activate feline agility again and mm-hmm. uh, move 80 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 50 so I'm going to get up uh, next to Cork um, mm-hmm. and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds um, so sorry I do need yes. to be right next to him um, so I'm going to cast Cure Wounds yep um, and hopefully do more than one health back but we'll see he'll get me over half health <laughs> there you go seven, seven points back seven. nice thank you very much um, and that's my go over. Cool. Uh, Shameless, you're up. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna run up these, run up these stairs um, to there, um, around the other side of Cork, and um, yeah, again, swing with my swing with my quarter staff uh, to this uh, beastie. Um, and that is going to do it 10 points of damage. Um, and again, again, I'm going to follow up uh, with um, some, I'm going to try and, you know, snap its knee by kicking it in the wrong, in How the wrong way. How would you like to do this? Ah, oh, well, there you go. Oh, is that just with that damage? Yeah. Ah, oh, perfect. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to uh, run up um, and uh, yeah, swing, swing around and just, um, yeah, smash hit both his knees, and then it's just going to splinter kind of on himself and uh, die, expire. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And you, you hear all the grungs um, around you start cheering, mm-hmm. um, and and you'd actually understand that they'd be like, "Yes, the large ape is dead." <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Take out the How zombies. Does that sound in their language, Joe. It's literally like ribbit, 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 ribbit. Nice, <laughs> but but uh, my but yeah, uh, Seamus can speak grung. Um. Okay. Take out the zombies. Fine. Um. And the the zombies. Um. Now that they've seen you. You guys run past. Um. This one here. Um. Doesn't actually have enough movement to get up the stairs, but he's, he's coming towards Azrael. Oh, they figured oh, out the stairs out. now. Well, he's just seen Azrael run past him and is kind of running towards him. Okay. Um, and the 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 others um, are two sort of moving through the water, but at a very slow rate. These ones here on the right hand side are just going to carry on moving around to the right. Um, um, Unbeknownst to them, everyone else has gone past. So, Corp, you're up. Okay, how high is the um, drop that we've got uh, going around the base of the temple? Uh, it's 10 foot. 10 foot, so no damage jumping off there? No. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm just figuring out 10, 15, 20. All right, Cork will just carrying on with his rage and throwing himself blindly into into attack. We'll go for uh, the two on the left mm-hmm. because he can jump there, at the right in between them, and he's going to basically jump down and just try and splat. One of the zombies with the mall. Nice. Ah, they painted it to cork smash. <laughs> Overhead, splat. Mm. 
Uh, great rig this morning. Nice. Yeah. yeah. 19? Yeah, hits. That is 22 damage. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so the first one just literally splats as you, you fly over the top of it. You, I'm just not my hat. Um, <laughs> you just <laughs> breathe it down, and the, the zombie just disintegrates into pieces. Uh, I was, so, sorry, I was just just to interrupt. On roll 20 in the right hand column, the, the audience can't see this, but it does say cork. It says two, pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's I, I edited my sheet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so he put on his rage attack. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that he's pissed oh, off. He's pissed off. Yeah, he's pissed yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was me. Like, what? Too pissed. Too pissed. <laughs> he's too pissed. <laughs> he's, uh, that is that is his rage. It's just I edit the name of attacks and things like that on Roll Twenty because it amuses me greatly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the way to do it. Um, because Cork has killed something, he gets a bonus attack. Nice. Yeah. So he's going to smack the other one. He's going to do the exact same thing. Uh, advantage. That will that will do. That's yeah. a nineteen to hit. That hits as well. And it does twenty three damage. Nice. Just so that would my also... previous attempt. <laughs> So that one also just splatters into the, the lake um, and disintegrates into the ground. Yeah. Cork literally just lands and splats one and then just like a baseball batter just <laughs> and just knocks the head of the other zombie out of the out of what is effectively the arena. It's a home out, out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> Lars, Lars yells, Whoa, that was awesome! Nice hit! Almost as good as Buster! <laughs> Cork doesn't know who this Buster is, but Cork <laughs> uh, The Grungs are going to once again uh, fire more um, blow darts into the, the zombies below, um, causing them some minor irritation more than anything else. And then, Lars, you're up. So, Lars is going to move right up to here, which is just which is just outside of range, and he's he's going to turn to uh, he's going to turn to to Obo and say, "Hey, cuz, watch how it's done," and he's going to actually uh, activate his. Um, activate his uh, his shell defense and all of a sudden just into a shell and just kind of falls midair down down in the water he's just sitting right there in his shell and you can kind of hear him saying things but it's like echoing from inside the shell <laughs> <laughs> like little little banters like out to obo <laughs> that's my that's my action obo shomo it's done we're gonna again we're gonna take aim so the zombie that's on the stairs we're gonna take a slow aim steady ourselves take a take a deep breath hold it aim fire here we go it's a 12 yeah it hits it hits right good boom five damage Nice. So yeah, aiming, just aiming for the head. Yeah, you you, you, you hit the zombie and uh, it, it hits into the side of its its head and it still just kind of looks at you in its vacant stare, just <sighs> standing there. <laughs> so Lars, it's this um this one's still standing. If you can hear me, I know you're hiding, like, but I think he can see you now. It's obviously oh. it's obviously not interested in you because it only eats brains, you see. <laughs> so it's gonna Jesus. come out to me, like. <laughs> and at this point, you really can't you really can't hear it, but it's just this muffled like <laughs> kind of echoing out of the out of out of the shell. 
Uh, yes, go. You're up. All right. Um, because this is preface. Because I'm used to Cork being in the middle of the action, I'm going to turn and aim towards him. And then, oh, right. And then I'm going to aim. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just using Cork as your, your bearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my bearing. You know. I'm the tactical support, Jessica. <laughs> All right. Um, and that is my longbow. All right. Uh, eight. Yeah, hits. Great. And that's eight piercing. Uh, which one are you going for? Is it the one in the middle on the stairs? Or no, the, the one, one of the ones on the uh, the right. Okay. The closest yeah. one, I guess. Yeah, cool. So yeah, the arrow flies across the water and then hits into the zombie. But uh, it doesn't unfortunately take it down. It's still standing. Okay. And can I still move? Yeah. Yeah. You haven't moved yet. So yeah, you can do. All right. Well, and I will just move a little bit closer. Slow trudge through the water. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Azrael. Yeah. So I shall move Bernie between uh, the zombie and me, and uh, take a. White attack, mm -hmm. rolling uh, 23 to hit. Nice, yeah, hits. So he takes a big old chunk for, uh, uh, well, five damage, so not a big old chunk, but... A, a reasonable chunk. size chunk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, it still, is it still standing? It is still standing, yeah. yeah. Right, so that means I'm going to have to forego recharging feline agility this round. Uh, move 40 feet, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... Uh, I'll I'll stop there because that puts me in between the two, and I'll shoot at the same one uh, with an mm -hmm. arrow. So again, I'll, I'll pull a blank arrow from the pack. Uh, it's got a symbol of a bell on the end, and, and fire it off in its direction. So that's a DC fourteen saving throw, please. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, on what sorry wisdom was it again? Sorry, uh, I believe it's wisdom. Yeah. Uh, saves it. A zombie saving a wisdom save. Wow. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so it's all it's, happening it's, tonight. It's, it's the it's night for it, though. It's their night, really, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it is, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so yeah, it, it, it makes the bell sound, but unfortunately, I, I aim a little wide. It donks into the water and doesn't really have the full effect. So, no damage taken. Nice. Um, and that's my go. Seamus. Um, okay, so um, Seamus is going to run. Uh, And leap off the um, leap off the ledge, um, and uh, he's going to take a swing at this uh, zombie on the left there, um, as he's you know flying through the air like some kind of demented thing. Um, ooh, Twelve. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, and that'll do eight damage. Nice. Uh, on which one was it again? Sorry. Uh, this one on uh, the uh, to the bottom left of me. Yeah. Yeah, so that one that one goes down as well. Okie dokie. Um, so then I will do uh, the unarmed attack on um, that one on the left that is close to me. Yeah, sure. Um, and that is going to do eight points of damage. Nice. Yeah, so you just turn around and kick him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've I've, I've smashed uh, smashed the first one with my uh, with my staff, and then I've kind of used that to kick uh, kick the other one. Like a roundhouse kick. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Uh, and then the zombie's actually going to uh, fight back, um, and it says slam. So I'm assuming he's going to try and pick you up and smash you into the ground. Yeah. Um, and he does so uh, for five bludgeoning damage. Five damage for sure. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say that you're you're, sort you're of prone, prone or anything, anything like that. Okay. No. So, so I just um, so I just hop back up. Yeah, uh, and the the other one is gonna move next to him and, and do the same. Mm -hmm. um, Picked his interests, uh, mm. and he he misses. I'm assuming because nine. Yeah, nine yeah. nine's missing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. You're up. 
Cork taking the concept of baseball probably too far <laughs> and not really understanding it is just going to start doing a home run mad dash in an anti-clockwise direction, holding the holding the ball in the air, going yeah after knocking the ball's head. <laughs> firing off he's just running around the outside yeah so I'd, allow, uh, I'd allow movement around these these edges to be uh, not um, at half speed so Cork ends up somewhere around here <laughs> <laughs> oh he's going around the long way excellent oh wow <laughs> yes Cork's anti-clockwise is actually clockwise clockwise <laughs> yeah oh it's clockwise <laughs> sorry <laughs> Okay, great, cool. It, it, it's <laughs> clockwise. They run anti-clockwise in actual baseball. Don't know. I'm actually running clockwise. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lars, you're up. Are you still hiding in your shell, or have you uh, come out? Yeah. So you you start to hear the uh, the muffling noise get louder and louder and louder until it's actually like distinguishable of what what I'm saying. As he kind of pops his his head out of his shell and, and looks around, looks right at looks right at Oboe and says, time to finish the job, bud. And then he pops all the way out and runs in uh, right up next to uh, the zombie there and will attack with um, his mouth. Oh, it's a 13 to hit. You got mute? Yeah, that hits. Yep. Okay, 13. Okay. Ouch, 16 Oof. points of bludgeoning damage. Nice. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. How would you like to do that one? Yeah, nice. Okay. So, again, I will, you know, sort of look at Ovo and somewhat flaunt, maybe flex a little bit, <laughs> and then just, just clean swipe like that right to the side of the head. Nice. So, yeah, you just see it's just hell head just cave in um, as, you, as you hit in the side of the head with your mole and it fall to the floor. That's how it's done, cut. Uh, it's it's all right, it's all right, you know. Calm down, calm down. It's just uh, <laughs> I got the brains, man. And, yeah, okay, you got the brawn. It's it's fine, you know. The jeans you got that right, that. buddy. <laughs> you need to pick it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna pick it up. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Obo. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. So the stairs are in front of me. I'm gonna run up the stairs. Mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 gets me to the top of the stairs. And I'll see uh, Azrael and I'll kind of pop along there and see what all the commotion is about. Yep. And that's see, it. You can... That's, can I, I can't see them, I'm assuming, down below me because of the. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'd be able to due to the angle. Um, yeah. You'd need to probably sort of be somewhere around here to be able to. You yeah. down there. But there's no other enemies I can see. There's none in the building as I kind of run past. Not unless you consider the grung frog-like creatures enemies. Um, uh, we're not attacking them. They're not attacking us. So, no. So yeah. Yes, and if you right. like. Yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's two more. Uh, I'll get the one that's closest to Seamus. Mm -hmm. With another longbow attack. Um, and again, using him as my bearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna regret that when you roll a natural one. Just yeah. that. I am, but you know, <laughs> no risk, no reward. Oh, that's close. Uh, yeah, it's. All right, there we go. Um, D for seven. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this time he goes flying past Seamus um, and, and just sort of skims past his little, little head and into the back uh, hindquarters of the, the zombie that's standing there. And I will move three again. Mm -hmm. And Yezreel, or Azrael even. Uh, I'll move Bernie to start with. Uh, mm -hmm. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, I was aware that there were a couple of zombies over in that direction. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move also. Uh, so 5, 10, 15. So I take it I can see them below me, can I? Yes. Okay, so that's that's 20 feet. I'm going to move 5, jump down, 
Um, do you need me to make an acrobatics check or anything? No, no, it's only ten foot. So. Okay, uh, and then finish my movement there and shoot them in the back, please. Yeah, sure. And I'm just going to take a normal normal shot bow um, shot this time. No cantrips or anything. So not a normal arrow. Fire and and, and oh. yeah, there's there's a natural one you was. Right there. <laughs> there's the yes. natural one. <laughs> it's not a <at> cool. <laughs> 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 Uh-huh. Could you um could you roll your damage dice for me, please? Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> so yeah, that's ten points of piercing damage. So yeah, the um the arrow flies past uh, almost through both the zombies and and straight uh, towards um Chambers, who's uh-huh. unable to to jump out of the way in time. And but he so can't catch it uh, though, can't he? Yeah, I can catch it. So and I've then, uh, I've got a skill. Uh, Called deflect missiles, so I can use my reaction. Uh, oh, here I can put it up for you guys. So I can use my reaction uh, to catch the arrow, um, and I take um, uh, it's reduced by one d10 plus eight. Yes, and then uh, <clears throat> am I right in thinking that you can make a check to see whether you can attack someone with it? Uh, yeah, I can spend a spend a key point. And then I can um, to throw it a, back at me. Yeah, to throw it back at you. Um, <laughs> I don't no, think I'll be doing that. <laughs> no, I think you can choose who you throw it at. Is that not right? Um, read of the. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it says you can spend a key point to make a ranged attack with the weapon or piece of ammunition you just caught. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fine. So yeah, I will um, catch it and um, attack the zombie with it. <laughs> yes. I say, ah, oh, thanks. Do, you want to do the damage bit of it first? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I need to roll a, a, a d10, don't I? Um, so that is 5 plus 8. It was 13. What was your damage? 10. 10. ten. So oh, there we catch go. It. Yeah, so I catch it. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I will um, smash uh, smash the zombie. Uh, smash. With a smash. Yeah, just... Yeah, I, I'll just try and cover up my mistake by shouting... Heads up, Seamus. Yeah, uh, use this on him. <laughs> well, after I've done it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Use this. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Az. <laughs> <laughs> That's my go over. <laughs> nice. Uh, how much damage do you do to the zombie? Um, I'm assuming it's... Just... Is it a ranged attack, isn't it? Yeah, it's a ranged yeah. attack, but I don't have any ranged attacks. Um, so I guess we could just do the... Uh, what's a normal 1d6? 1d6, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, 1d6. So that'll be four four points. Nice. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to do it towards uh, the, the nearest... Well, yeah. They're both next to you. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably do it to that one, yeah. Cool. So yeah, you, you sort of grab the arrow out of uh, the air and yeah. slam it into the shoulder of the, the zombie that's standing in front of you. That's it. Um, and uh, it is your go next, actually, as well. Cool. Uh, so I dust myself off um, and uh, yeah, again with my quarter staff, um, start beating the zombie around its, uh, its middle. Um, cool. Um, so yeah, that'll be a hit, and that'll do six points of damage. Again, it'll be the that that bottom one there. Yep. Uh, so how would you like to do that one? Um, so yeah, as I as I smash it, um, uh, it, it my 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 uh, my staff just goes clean through its um, decayed body, and it just kind of splits in two and does the comedy. <laughs> thing where uh, it's two halves of its body going different uh, different spots and then i'll um i'll follow that up on this other zombie with a another unarmed kicking cool give it a right good kick in so i will um 14 uh, so that'll be a hit mm-hmm. and uh, that will do eight points of damage nice and that one's also dispatched as well excellent so- uh, as the, the rampage, yeah, shameless rampage. <laughs> yeah, as the uh, the last zombie um, falls, uh, all the the um, frog creatures start cheering 
um, and, and shouting towards you, uh, Seamus, and, and the rest of your party. Um, and I'm assuming you would um, tell everybody else what they're shouting. Yeah, like, absolutely. They're getting ready to attack, like. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop <I'll>... shooting. <laughs> 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 um, and so they're shouting, uh, oh, thank you, yay, the, the, the undead horde of vanquished. Um, um, you must uh, come come with us to, to see the king. He, he would like to meet you, I'm sure. 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 Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll relay that to the uh, to the group. You mean you mean they're gonna take us to like the king's man? Oh, <laughs> yeah, to the king's man. <laughs> Yeah, the, at this joke. point, like Inside Lars joke. will kind of run over to uh, to Obo and and uh, just give him kind of like a big sort of in, in, embrace, almost looks like a like a bear hug. Just pick him up, kind of shake him around, and, and put him back down. Say, "What's up, Cuz? How'd you hook up with this crew?" Well, it's like uh, it's like right. like just put me down, Lars. Put me down. Calm down. Calm down. Look, like I it's good to see you and all, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 working here. Working. This is, this is my job, man. Your job? Yeah, I'm. This I'm is a, my I'm job a, too. What? What? Well, no. We, I mean, I got the job first. Like, I, I met them. You didn't. You just met them now. You can't have the job now. I, I met them first. Like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm the guy. No, no, no. Oh, oh, buddy, I've been working with these little frog dudes. Oh, they, these, the these are yours, like. Oh. Yeah, these are my little uh -oh. green buds. We just lost someone. Who did we lose? Uh, Matt. <laughs> we just lost Matt. <laughs> there goes the images. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's, oh, here he comes. Is everyone going to move back again? No. Nope. the right places? No. Nope. Oh, Josh. Josh is now the DM. I am yeah. now the dungeon master. Okay. Yeah. All right. New script, guys. We're changing. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's uh, do it. Yep. Good time. I am That's now Josh. Over. Yeah, oh, I'm cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is great. Oh. Okay, it is DM time. time. To be sure, to be sure. To be sure. <laughs> I don't have anything to unbox. <laughs> Your mind. I'm sure you can think of something. Yeah, just go over. It's, the bookcase is full of stuff. Just go in. Just, read it. <laughs> just, just pick anything you want. Open it up. Oh man, I wish. Uh, you, everyone, continue, and I'll, I'll try and uh, improv and fix this <laughs> yeah. if I can. Uh, so uh, yeah, what did I miss? Um, everything. Um, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm a cat um, now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the last thing yeah, I heard. The, the, the grungs um, all, all line up uh, the way into this giant frog-like statue um, and, and sort of beckon you into the, the the doorway that's in the front of it, that's carved in the front of it. Um, and when you when you do venture inside, you notice a, a sort of uh, doorway and, and beyond that is a, a pool uh, mm -hmm. and then Further inside, there's a, a, a rocky stone with a, a large seat sitting in the middle. Um, and beyond that is another uh, pool of water. Um, and a number of more frog-like creatures, more, different colours this time, rather than just the orange. There's this green ones and red. Um, but the one sitting on the throne itself is of a gold hue. Um, um, give me two seconds. And he turns around to, to you all um, and basically says, he, he says in Grung. Do any of you speak Grung? No. <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> a joker, I see. Yeah. Um, please explain to your friends that um, we will allow uh, allow you all to be able to, to speak and commune with us easily if they if they trust us. Um, and the, the the grungs nearest uh, to each of you hand you this sort of sticky, slimy um, mucus. 
Oh. Um, and, and ask each of you to just basically pass it from one person to the next. So Lars, is this like, uh, is this sanitary? Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff, cause and Mar just grabs it and like, <laughs> <laughs> and then shoves it, shoves it over to. Uh, I, I, I got a, like a delicate, uh, delicate tummy. Can I, can, can I just like no? Maybe I put that little pinky like. It's fine. I, I, I had a big breakfast. I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be rude, but we just pass along. That's fine. And so yeah, as uh, as each of you um, hold it, you you suddenly um, realise that you actually understand what the, the creature is uh, sitting on all of the throne are able to, to say. Oh, so he's just have to hold it. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. They the goes. Yeah, you only, we only told you to hold it. There was no need to, to ingest. Lars <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that that came off of this one's skin. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> we don't lick frogs where I'm from, so um, as this is going on, Cork is still doing his circuit around the outside going, Cork, oh, yeah. Cork, <laughs> Cork, Cork, Cork. <laughs> Just not following um, anything. <laughs> as a as a, a way of appreciation for, for helping us with the um, the attack. On our, our people and, and to saving our, our spawn. Um, Is it like spawn? I don't something. eat your spawn. My dear God, he keeps on eating like egg babies. <laughs> I don't eat your spawn. I mean, it tastes so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Is anyone got a hanky? He, he, he turns to, to Lars and says, Ah, yes, Lars, our, our agreement. Um, I hope this is, is settlement enough and, and hands you a, a bag, um, which seems quite weighty. Well, I think this would do it, but, you know, I did get them stones out of that river so your, uh, your pond can fill back up. And, um, you know, between you and me, uh, we know what you guys use that pond for. So uh, <laughs> now you're, you know, you're back to getting busy, little dudes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ruining, ruining my childhood, Michelangelo. <laughs> that was the goal. <laughs> you guys are um, really the nicest people. And, and, and what, what he does is he says, um, "Yeah, as a as a way to to thank you for for your assistance, um, allow me to to give you these." Uh, jars and he reaches into the pool behind him and pulls out a number of small frogs and and collects up jars and and just basically scrapes up the side of the frog collecting up the mucus into said jars um, and hands it to uh, holds holds out the first one to whoever would like to to grab. No, no, no. It's all like, and I'll even take a step back. All right, because <laughs> no, you know, I'm with a delicate tummy. What does what does this do? Does this just do the uh, allow us to speak? Uh, no, there's um, the, the, depending on our, the color of our skin oh. depends upon the um, nature of the mucus. Uh, uh, what were the colored ones he scraped? Yeah, can uh, we see this the one? Color? This one would be orange, uh, so it's a, an orange uh, colored mucus. And he says this would um, uh, the poison creature that that this mucus touches uh, would be frightened of all of its allies. Okay, this would be a really really good moment if Sarkis was here with his bloody book. <laughs> <laughs> so he could tell us what these things are. <laughs> um, and he then he then puts the, the the sort of baby frog back into the pool behind him uh, uh -huh. and grab and basically fishes around and grabs another one. Uh, and this one is is a the red colour, the same as the um, two that are standing in front of you. And and yet again um, does the same and holds out another jar and says that this uh, mucus would make compel even a creature to only be consumed with eating um, should the mucus touch their skin. Okay. Um, 
and and, then, and you're saying and you're saying the the mucus from these is is in a container. So if we took yeah, those, it's in a little we're not little jar it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, he finally picks up another jar and basically just scrapes it up his own side. Oh. <clears throat> and okay. um, Dude, and then where, did, that where did you just scrape that? Did you just like scrape that up your ass or something? And is was that where, where did that? What? What? I don't want to know. I'm just. <laughs> I'll just wait outside. At, at this point, I'm kind of done. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna it's, go. And I'll, it's I'll just froggy goo, Obo. Just let it go, man. <laughs> Um, and he says, um, and this, uh, the most um, collectible of all, will compel a creature to only be able to speak grung. Only be able to speak grung. That's correct. Wow. So one causes fear, one causes hunger, the yeah. other one causes indecipherable language. Excellent. Yes. Rip it, rip it. <laughs> And, and how uh, many are how many vials are there? Just three. Uh, yeah, just one of each. Okay. Um, I hope that this is um, goes some way in reimbursing you for your assistance. Some way, yes. But where's the gold? I heard you guys had treasure. Oh. Uh. Hmm. Where's your riches? We will leave it there for now when we go on the break. <gasps> ba, ba, ba. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. <laughs> so yes, uh, what we're we going to do, I think Dave, you said you we're going to run the um, we'll, we'll run the Beal and Grimm uh, Kickstarter trailer. So but prior uh, to doing that, we need yeah. to organise the giveaway, right? Uh, we can do it when we get back. That's fine. We're going to have we're going to have a chat anyway, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, here we go. So there you go. It. So we'll we'll have we'll have we've got everyone, we've got three minutes. And then we're back. So everyone in the audience you'll you'll get to see uh, Matt. Um <laughs> and we're gonna all go pee while that's on. So we'll see you. We're gonna have a whiz and then we'll we'll be right back. Oh. See you in a Don't go anywhere. Hi, my name is Matthew Lillard. You've probably seen me in many a horrible movie back in the 90s. Can we start again? It's me, Matt! Hi. I'm uh, major motion picture star Matthew Lillard. Uh, hi. All right, Sam. I'm Matthew Lillard. <laughs> What's the line? You just do whatever the fuck. I almost had it. I got a booger on my shirt. What's the first line? I was in terrible movies during the 90s. You grew up on them and you watched them, sucker. My name is Matthew Lillard. You may know me as Beetle from Beetle and Grimm's. Last couple of years, our company is focused primarily on the DM, creating battle maps, in-world handouts, jewelry items, and of course, stuffed animals. But now it's time to focus on you, the players. Because when we gather around a table, we're not there to hear a story, we're there to tell a story, all of us. And sometimes that story goes on for years and is remembered only on coffee-stained scraps of paper or three random journals. But worst of all, it's in your head. And why is that bad? Because I'm not that smart. Bill's way smarter than me. When he says it's Grimm that killed the frost giant that was on its way to destroy the town, I can't really argue with him because I don't have it on a journal. And if I had it in a journal, sitting on a bookshelf, you could just say, hey, check out my journal. We all know the problem with a journal. In a real game, when are you gonna use that thing? On a real night of gaming, you bounce from a core rule book to the advanced player's guide, and of course your character sheet. And the entire game goes like boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, 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 boom. You never go back to this thing. And again, the story is only in your brain, and Bill's telling you that he is the real champion. But what if? Stay with me here. What if, Charlie? Charlie, thanks. What if we created a single book specifically tailored for your character class? And what if it had an enormous character sheet to record every detail of your character, every stat, every strength, weakness, magic item, enemy, ally, even your familiar, and then took all the official Pathfinder rules, the spells, feats, and skills that you need for your class and your class only, and combined that with an expansive journal to capture your story. 
And obviously it's only useful if it's on heavy paper to handle the years of wear and tear and bound on a lay flat binding so you can use every inch of it. And of course, us being us, we add amazing artwork from across the Pathfinder universe, as well as our own custom pieces commissioned specifically for this book. And that's why I'm here today, to introduce you to Beetle and Grimm's complete character chronicle. Character sheet, rule book, journal, all in one. The tools to tell your story and the pages to preserve. If my story had been included in one of these, I'm pretty sure that Beetle, the greatest dungeon delver ever, would have been the true hero of the group. Not Bodum, not Tanner, and definitely not Grimm. Because it all would have been written down. The incontestable truth. Or at least, a well-documented lie. Which is just as good. I'm Matthew Lillard, and we are Beetle and Grimm. Hello. Hi. Thank you for uh, sticking with us. And uh, we're going to ask Josh, uh, our guest, a couple of questions now. Um, so, Josh, um, you you run the the Maguire Review, and if you could just let everyone know your your YouTube link, I think that we're going to put a link to it in chat. What the hell is that, Dave? It's, it's in chat. <laughs> <There's a door. laughs> It's Lars! <laughs> I like it, I'm one. I like how you do it. Like, oh my god, that is awesome. And I just wrote, you know, I kind of like drop in, like, you know, just to say hi, because, you know, this is what's going on. But, you know, it, it's kind of the way it is. You know, it's it's nearly so Halloween, good. so I've been dropping up, you know, so, you know, so like, I got my new, here we go, yay! <laughs> so, hey, Beetle and Grim. Don't forget to check out Beetle and Grim. They got a great Kickstarter going on. It's really good. Oh my God. What if I've been drinking? It really smells really bad. I love the way you have the ticket. You have the yeah, ticket it's... hanging from the yeah. eyeball. But is the mouth actually open? Like, can you actually like? I'm inside. It's eating me. <laughs> Save me. Help! Oh, that's uh, great. <laughs> well, I was massively the... confused for a half second. <laughs> it's like ET mixed with portal. <laughs> there we go. Like, so, so yeah, tell us a, a little bit about the the Maguire review. Uh, how, how long has it been? How long have you been been doing? I'd rather see Dave do this for the next uh, fifteen minutes. Yeah, well, yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the Maguire review, uh, it's. Uh, I think you get the links up there. It's youtube.com forward slash the McGuire review. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Twitter is just at the McGuire and uh, Instagram and Facebook. It's at the McGuire review. You know, it's a board game review channel for the, for the most part. I mean, we definitely focused heavily on the board gaming side of things. I really have a passion for board games, but you know, I'm also doing tabletop RPG stuff. I do tons of miniature unboxing and unboxings and reviews for uh, WizKids uh, and a lot of other companies as well. So just trying to really cover the whole gambit of, of tabletop uh, gaming, right? Just just bring yeah. really good, really cool stuff to the video and share with as many people as possible. That's what the channel is all about. Um, it's not really about uh, you know making any money. It's not a it's not a money maker, right? Uh, any of the, the the money that's being made, the YouTube ads and whatnot, is always reinvested back into the giveaways. That's one big thing I do across my channel. I do tons of giveaways, uh, and that's really just to make sure that that the the subscribers that that's kind of my way of giving back, right? You're taking time to watch the video and consume that content, so I, I like to do giveaways and ship stuff out for free worldwide and. Um, so that's you know that, that that's the channel. Yeah, and that's exactly um, what you're gonna do today, isn't it? Like that's right. Isn't it? That's exactly what we're gonna do today. Is, yeah. So uh, did you want to did you want to pick a, a a word, um, for the giveaway? Uh, it's, gonna it's gonna have to be bus. It's gonna to be Buster. <laughs> that's, that's a good word, like. Buster. B u s t e r. Buster. And that that is Lars. That's Laura's mouth. <laughs> so I, I like was watching uh, one of your uh, reviews or unboxings the other day, and I just keep pausing and looking at all the, the board games that you've got in your back background there, yeah. and trying to look at which ones I've played and, and whatnot. Um, is there any that you sort of go back to that you've 
played hundreds of times, so that you still get enjoyment, the same amount of enjoyment you almost got the first time you played it. Yeah, so I think for that question, it's really it would it would probably be it would probably be Runebound. So fan, if you haven't played that game before, Fantasy Flight uh, years ago released a, a game called Runebound. Um, and I just, I, I've, I've always loved that game. I absolutely love Runebound. And it was one of the games that really, I would say, pulled me into uh, the hobby, like where I sit mm -hmm. now with the hobby. It's really what, what pulled me in. I mean, I loved board games as a kid. Played, uh, I mean, on the last stream we talked about, Solar Quest was one of the first board games I really, really got into. I played with my grandma all the time. Yeah. Obviously, Hero Quest and, and things like that over the years, but. That's the, the Hero uh, Quest the is probably one of the first board games I remember playing as a kid. Yeah, right. yeah, and and actually, this isn't a shout out or anything, but but actually, the uh, uh, Hasbro's doing a reprint mm -hmm. of of Hero Quest right now. They're they they're it's not a Kickstarter. They're kickstarting it through their own. Yeah, you know, it's called yeah. Pulse, but um, so it's pretty cool. So if you're into you're, yeah. you're into Hero Quest, you may want to check that out. I remember always trying to like rope my mum and my dad into playing it with me when I was like, yeah, small. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also saw that you had you got Space Hulk as well, which I remember playing like ages yeah. ago. It was classic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got Space Hulk. That was the um let's see, that one was the that's when they came out and they re released. It wasn't like an updated edition, if I'm if, if I'm right. It was it was years ago and I, I remember it was sold out like everywhere and at the time um, I was living in Indiana, and there was a uh, a local game shop there that that had like three of them mm -hmm. um, in, in the back, and it was sold out every, everywhere. You couldn't get your hands on it. They were going for hundreds of dollars on eBay, and I, I walk into this game shop, and it's just it, there's there's like a couple in the back, and there's one they had that was sitting out on the, this bottom shelf all the way in the back, and I'm like, oh my god, they like there it is and the guy's like oh yeah we ordered a bunch of them and, and people that pre-ordered like some of them didn't come and pick it up so yeah sure you want it and i think i even got it for less than msrp which was like unreal so i was on cloud nice. nine that that day as i i drove home carting this big box home of this game yeah i you gotta love that you gotta love those moments <clears throat> oh, yeah, i managed sure. to get that on the day of release so i was uh, nice. very happy it was a uh... oh yeah it was a popular <laughs> popular item Oh, um, yeah. So we had a question in chat just now, which was, uh, are there any games that you'd recommend for um, someone playing with their sort of children? With children? Um, I'm assuming you know, that would be sort of fancy-based related games rather than, you know, Clue. Yeah, so there is a, if you're playing with kids, so I'll, I'll, I'll say this one because I've played it recently. If you're playing with kids, and you like sort of the RPG um, theme, you're into kind of the D&D &D theme. Um, Hasbro just released, in partnership with Wizards of the Coast, a new Dungeons and Dragons game. It's a new board game. It's got a really, really low price tag. I think it goes for like 24 bucks um, on Amazon. And it's very, very straightforward. It's very simple. It's a lot of dice rolling. It's a lot of luck. But it works perfect for kids, especially if you're trying to get them into some of the lore and the story and it's totally manageable by kids and it does have some customization so you've got a character you can customize your different abilities and, and your class um it's i would recommend that one definitely if you want to play with kids and you want to have that rpg feel um i've i've actually always played kind of the the adult you know at least the 14 and above games with with mm -hmm. my kids um <clears throat> I think it's just, I, I think it's great, right? So on that topic, definitely, if I could recommend something enough, definitely play board games with your kids. It, it's going to help with their cognitive skills, with their math skills, their reasoning skills. I mean, you're constantly getting the strategy and the tactics and what do you do in this situation in the most efficient way? So, you know, whoever, whatever that question came from, I, I wasn't looking at the chat. That's all, all the way. Pick up some games you can play with your kids and, um, I, mean, I played. I played. Is it Mud? Was it Muck, the one that uh, Wizards of the Coast released for free um, with with my kids? It's basically like D and D, but like slimmed down. Yeah. Um, and that that was really good. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, would, you, would you say you've got like a specific genre of games that you actually like best? For example, I, my preference is hidden role games like Werewolf and Resistance and things like that. Yeah, mine is definitely, and I and and I and I will say that I probably will start to do a lot more exclusive of this type of content on on the channel because it 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 is what I what I really what I really enjoy. Um, I feel like the passion really comes through the most on, on this type of type of game. I love the adventure style games. So any game where you're building a character and you're going on some form of an adventure, it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be campaign based. Although I do love the the campaign based games like Descent. And there's the Lord's game, the Fantasy Makes. I absolutely love. You've got obviously Gloomhaven, right? Although although that one can be a little finicky, but um, yeah, any type of game like that, I really really like. And that would definitely be my style. That's what I get the most enjoyment out of. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I do love a good worker placement or area control game. You know, I think about uh, breaking games is uh, Tribes is a really good one uh, for area control um, and, and placement. You got their new uh, Elder Veil that's coming out, which is going to be phenomenal. I can't wait for that. So, yeah, good adventure stuff. I love it. Cool. That's why I love doing this kind of stuff too. I love going on the adventure. Um, how often do you put out like YouTube videos as well? Is it weekly or? You know, I, it's kind of, I hate to say this, but it's kind of sporadic. I mean, I, I try to stick to a schedule where at least, you know, one video is going out per week, but that just doesn't always happen. Right. And, yeah. and the reason is because I don't, I, you know, I don't do this for a full time Mm -hmm. gig this is like something i do quote unquote as a hobby and it's got to happen kind of in between the, the being a husband being a father right my life my, my job and so you know I try, I try to do the one one video a week but uh if i can't then, then then i can't sometimes if i can't you'll see a bunch of videos sort of come out all stacked up because i'll usually do all these in, in like a day i'll shoot like four or five videos and then i'll spend like a week editing everything and Mm -hmm. then i'll release everything out so yeah that's how it goes cool, cool. do we want to put a winner do we want to give him uh, one more minute to, to enter oh, look. what was the sure what was the word again I've forgotten. Buster. 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 So, yeah, exactly exclamation mark buster in chat you've got 20 seconds before Azrael pulls the lever. <laughs> yep, he's uh, been sitting here talking to himself on mute. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, last last chance. Um, yeah, Brian's asking what the giveaway is this week. Josh, do you want so, to just give us a recap? Yeah. yeah, so the giveaway is, let's see if I can get it. I'm not sure how well with the, you're probably not going to be able to see it with the lights. Sorry, I've got a close up we can bring up as well. So we can just. Uh, okay. Let's bring up, let's get rid of the map. Yeah, bring, bring that up. So it is the, it's actually branded Pathfinder. Okay, but this stuff can be used in, in, in anything. This is the Thieves Guild Not set by WizKids. Uh, and I'll say that it has a, quite a Not few one. really unique pieces in it mm -hmm. that are really cool, like some tables and some pub tables with like gold and beer steins and beer kind of frothing over. It's actually really, really done well. This is a really good set. It's got some high detail in it. And it's got an altar, which fits good with uh, Tomb of Annihilation. And it's got light-up features. Don't forget the light-up features. And there is like three different settings. Most people don't know that. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe maybe people do. But the, the, all of those WizKids ones that light up have actually three different settings. If you push that little button under there, you get like a glow, you get like a flicker, and you get like an always-on. So it's really cool, and that, that's it's a big box as well, isn't it? If you hold it up again, I it's mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent, yeah. it's a decent sized box. I mean, it's probably, yeah. you know, it's probably 13, 13 14 inches across. You know, nice. it's a decent sized box. Sweet. Okay. It should take yeah, you free thank worldwide. You. No? Cool. Let's uh, let's let's see who is our winner. Okay, so pushing the button now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Last person to enter. 
And he's yeah. won it. <laughs> nice. Well done, Brian. Yeah. So oh, session, session zero got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, that's what he gets. Right. You wear the, yeah. the lucky clothes. That's what it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's that's what what it really like, got in that's five yeah. seconds before yeah. I pushed the button. <laughs> he, he literally, I think, done it. Definitely just not before. bribed. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, right? You can send me that T-shirt later. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. All right, well, I'll get that out. Uh, I'll get that out next week. Nice. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure, um, I'm sure Ryan will be super happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Take a picture. Take a picture once you get it. That's what I ask everybody to do with any giveaway, right? Once you get the giveaway, get it out, get it on the table, take a picture, post it on the Facebook site. Yeah. Uh, tag the Badgers. Tag me. Have some fun. And like I said, sorry for coming and seeing that. I mean, it's pretty apt soon. It's like a thief's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Yeah, just snuck in there at the end, stole it. Yeah, yeah. He loves him some whiz kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> cool. All right, should we get back to it? All right, let's do it. So yeah, the um, you're you're currently standing in front of a bunch of uh, grungs and the grung king, um, who's handed you a couple of vials of mucus, um, which I'm I'm sure one of you is gonna. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sack, that's, whatever. That's been spirited away somewhere. Yeah. Um, and, Famous. And... This is your life's treasure. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of goo. I don't think so. <laughs> Did you tell me that you came, you came all the way here for some, uh, yeah? No, 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 no. They're 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 holding out on us for sure. You seem you seem a bit like uh, upset. Are you gonna go like crazy on them or something? Well, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> so you you kind of like you are. I, I don't. I, you know. <laughs> You're undecided at the moment. Is what? this gonna? Are you Seamus gonna rage out if he doesn't get his gold? Seamus rage. Yep. What What do you mean your life's treasure? I was uh, I was uh, deposited uh, as a as a wee bairn, um with a map of this place and a note saying, "Train him; he will find the treasure." And this is where we've ended up. Hmm. hmm. And where were you left again? Sorry. Uh, I was left at uh, the doors of a monastery. Um, back some other place. Hmm. I believe I've met your mother. <laughs> My I'll mother? Find out. Ba your half frog. Your half frog. <laughs> <laughs> <My> half <grung. laughs> oh. Wow. Okay. Um, my mother? I never your knew mother. my mother. <laughs> Her name was Rose. She's over right. there, like, look. She's, 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 <laughs> she's currently being licked. <laughs> yeah. some How dare in... you? That's my mother you're talking about. <laughs> she, spent, she spent a long time in the spawning pool. <laughs> Rose. Rose, how do you know this? How? What? Tell me more. She, she was um, uh, she, she was friendly with the grungs. And not in that <laughs> way, was. before you start saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Who did she was, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, The purple ones made you horny. <laughs> oh dear. What have dear, I walked dear. into? This is totally going the wrong way. <laughs> no, she licked the blue frog. That's the aphrodisiac. <laughs> um, she was um, sympathetic to our, our plight and, and, and aiding us um, with the, the undead problem. Oh. Um, she she felt that the jungles of the Cholt were no place for a, a young child. And so she decided that the, the only best course of action was to take you away from this place. Um, but, but gave me a map and told me to come here. That's correct. Oh, when I was an adult, of course. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yes. Sure. Once you had learned. This undead thing happens to you like a lot? The jungles of Cholt uh, are full of, of undead um, since uh, Razni raised them to attack the city of Mesro. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a well known blight on Cholt. I guess you have to be from here. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a local thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Someone should look um, into that. 
she did leave me with this. Um, and he hands you a, a small um, box. This um, is your brother. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Small uh, box. What does? What is it? Can I open it? Is, is what? What? Yeah. You, so many questions. You, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's unfortunately no visible way to open oh. the box. Um, okay. Something that you'd need to to go away and sort of study. I think, I think you better have gone out a chat with like Buster over there. Yeah, I was going to say Cork Smash. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I'll um. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look Cork, at that uh, at a later. Cork will give it a good go. I'm sure he will. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Oh, well. 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 Thank you very much. Um. So I guess I guess this was the treasure. It must have been. It must have been. I mean, you know, a little bit deflated, but uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Rose? Rose. Okay. Yes. The name was Rose Gold, uh, uh, Goldfound. Goldfound. Well, that makes sense. Um, right. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you know where she went? Have, where, when, when did you last speak to her or hear from her? Uh, many years ago. Uh, we have not seen her since she left to, to take uh. you away from this place. Oh dear. Okay. Why? Why she take you away from here? <laughs> that seems that seems a relevant question. As I say, she felt that the the jungles of Chalk were no place for a small child. Mm. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we 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 hope that you you have uh, better luck in finding her than than we have. Oh, you've been looking for her. She's she's uh, someone that we've we've looked for in the past, uh, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, have not been able to to find her. Mm -hmm. um, and we okay. also wish you the best of luck in your journey, wherever it may be. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs> I love the fact your life your life mission has been to return to that. Yeah, what? Well, yeah. I mean, you know. Today. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> no gold. Uh, no, I, I, no, no, yeah, no gold. No mum. Got a box and some goo. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Let's crack on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's a bum wipe. Oh, dear. A box wow. and some goo. Yeah, 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 love it. Um, this is what remains of your father. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is just all, all so much to take in. Um, yeah. All right. And is this and is this box open? Like what's? No, no, it's it's closed and no, it's it's a, a solid wooden box with no no key, no lock of, of uh, an entry point. Can, can I can I do some kind of? Buster, just, 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 Lars, use Buster, just smack it, man. Just smack it. Can I do some kind of check on it to see, uh, you know, if it's magical or anything like that? Yeah, you can do. Um, Arcana. Arcana. All right. Let's give that a go. Uh, it's an 11. Um, it doesn't seem to be magical in okay. your, your eyes. In my eyes. Um, All right. It's just something that you're going to need to sit and play with in your downtime. Okay. See if you can figure it out. It's basically a... Um, it's like a puzzle like box. A, a puzzle box, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> and what's this, Best... what's this box made out of? I mean, what's the material? Uh, it's like a, a solid wood. So like oak or, or some other local okay. tree. I mean, I could bust it open, but I'm probably going to shatter that little box. No, we'll we'll we do twin hammer smash. <laughs> twin yeah. hammer. I like what this one's thinking. Whoa! <laughs> 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 um, thank you very much. Um, I, I may I may come back to you on that, or at least cork. Uh, but for now, for now, I'll I'll sit and play with it. And the box. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> 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 the box, let's specify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Cool. So, uh, yeah, the grungs, um, they're, they're hospitable enough towards yourselves, um, but they 
they kind of like don't really have anywhere for you to, to stay. Oh, so there's no long rests. No, because they, they've only got these tiny little oh. mud piles and things. Grung shaped holes. Yeah. All right. Pork will try and take a short rest. <laughs> 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 can, I, I, can I try and recover some of my arrows? Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Uh, jav- javelins. Yeah. Oh, short. Sh- uh, go on, Josh. I was just gonna say I'll, I'll go over and pick up my pick up my javelins, my two that are sitting over here out front. Yeah, sure. Who who got injured? Cork. Cork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Cork. Cork. I, took, I took some damage as well. Um, okay. Uh, well, uh, I don't we really want to stay if there's uh, no. Nah, yeah, I, I don't want to stay if there's uh, if there's undead around. Let's 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 move on. Move on. Okay. I, I, I can fire off a spell that can heal the pair of you at the same time. Um, I, I'll cast prayer of healing. I'll, I'll gather everyone around so they're within thirty feet of me and cast mm-hmm. prayer of healing. So that's two d eight um, health back. Let's just roll that now. Um, so that is 13. 13 points of healing back to everyone. Cool. Um, obviously, okay. most of us haven't taken any damage. But everybody gets 13 back. Nice. Wow, that um, felt great, man! My, uh, my forte, if you like. Giving it nice out. Nice work. And healing here as well. Cool. So, what would you like to do now? Kind of... You you tell us, DM. <laughs> what's what's oh. up next? I... We're just hanging out. Well, we we got a, a frog party we can go to. Yeah, we could do. Yeah. Well, Lars is definitely gonna take a moment here to, to turn to uh, Obo and ask him, like, you know, how? Hey, cuz, how'd you end up with this crew? Well, as like as I was saying earlier, like you know, we had um, I, I saw them, I saw a few of them get off the boat, so they they were looking for a guide, and I was like, well, you know, I could don't, don't tell these them, uh, but you know, I I could I could do a you know use the gold like, so uh, I I said, hey, I'm a guide, I can take you where you want to go. Nice, just doing some guiding, huh? Yeah, nice and easy. They just wanted to have a quick tour into the jungle. So I was like, yeah, it's easy money. Like, So it was good. That's right. You always loved walking through the jungle, going on nature walks, hitting the books. Yeah. Not Lars. He's hitting the iron. He yeah, just yeah. kind of lifts up and flexes and the muscles just kind of bulge. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's 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 been, it's been like five years, Lars. And, you know, you, you haven't changed that much. You're, st- you're still hitting the iron. I can see you're much bigger than you were last time. But uh, yeah, you know, I still do it in nature walks. It's good. That's great. Yeah, old Hank. He trained me up good in the arena when I was doing all my athletic stuff. But uh, I'm not really doing that anymore. And and Lars just kind of looks down and it's almost kind of in, in shame, but he doesn't say anything. Wait, what, what's the, what's uh, what's the speed of problem like? Well, there's not really any problem. It's just, uh, well, you know my old uh, trick where I'd always, you know, do the tail spins, do my turtle tail push-ups. I was kind of the champ of the turtle yeah, tail Yeah, 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 it's like the thing you did when you won, yeah. <laughs> and he kind of shakes, he kind of shakes around and you can just hear the sort of light, ting, 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 kind of a little jingle and he, he pulls out of his shell where he stores it this little uh, trophy and it's actually fairly small it's only about four and a half five inches tall real shiny gold um it's got a little it's got a, like a turtle like sort of all sucked in and just just <laughs> basically just sitting straight up on on its tail well you know i uh always won them champs with the the turtle tail push-ups and I went for my signature move, the turtle tail spin, and it just didn't go so well. And man, I got I just laughed out of the arena. So I've kind of been on my own since then. Well, how, how long ago was that then, cuz? Oh, uh, it's been at least six months, man. Oh, yay. 
you know, I've been hanging around, hanging around the port, like, and it's, it's been, you know, it's pretty good. You can definitely pick up a few jobs there. I mean, you still got the muscles, like, even if you haven't. So, is the, if, have you still got your tail? Or did you, like, break it off? Oh, yeah. It's still there. And he turns around and, like, it kind of, it kind of comes out. And it's, just like, <laughs> it's, like, totally ripped as well. Like, even muscles <laughs> the tail. <laughs> but, but right at the tip, it's kind of, like, it's kind of bent a little bit where you can see it's been sprung and kind of damaged where he can't do his, he can't do his spins as well anymore, or at least he hasn't tried to do it since. Have you, have you, uh, have you been talking to these, uh, these frog people? Like, do, do they have a bit of goo that they could put on there and fix that right up? Well, I didn't really ask about fixing up the tail. They were more interested in me moving the big stones out of their river. So that's what I've been doing, you know, just kind of going from area to area within the jungle pretty much finding job to job that's how it's been no worries but i i, I tell you what i i can i can give you i need i know you're, you're like your trophy seems to be uh you know slightly depressing you but i can give you a new a new medallion like you know because you, you are good at what you do and i think you need a bit of a pick me up so hold, let me yeah i've got it right here let me let me just go and have a look i mean kind of Goes back into his shell and he's rummaging around. So, no, that's 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 not the one. And uh, no, that, that's not the one. That's not the one. Oh, oh, here, here it is. It's um, you, you should you, you could uh, you know wear this with pride. And I'm sure these frog people will will uh will, will like you even more if you if you just you know have this medal hanging around your neck. Like it's it's got a picture of a shark on it. Like it's just a, a whole shark medallion. You know, oh, and you, you frogs and sharks. And it's, it's all good. So. I think I think this would be really good for you. Just have have that on me, you know, because I haven't seen you for a while, so it's good to see you, cause. And Lars Lars takes it and, and, and puts it over his neck, and kind of puts his hand on on uh, above his shell, and kind of pats him a little bit. Yes, yes. Thanks. Good, yeah, no worries. It'll be good. Orc chimes in and goes, "Well, we could go heart shaped rock." Remember, saw from Big Firefinger was beyond, was beyond Big Frog statue, and Big Heart shaped thing. Go oh, check yeah, that out. Wasn't that the one that was kind of floating in the air, like? Yeah, yeah, the heart shaped rock. I've seen that. I've seen that out there. It's by the. Uh, it's gonna pass the river. Oh, right. So yeah, okay. So uh, everyone, uh, I know I'm your guide and everything, but I think Lars knows this bit of the area, but this bit of the jungle a little bit better than I do. So. Um, he's gonna guide the guide, and I guide you. Is that all right? Are you okay with that? Guided by guide, guided, guide, guide, guide That's by right. guide. That's right. Guided guide. Two guide, guides. Guide. Fine. Guide, guide. Yeah. Now I guide, will guide. tell you guys. This heart-shaped rock has got some strange stuff going on, like almost emanating light. Sometimes might be magical. Might be a disco. <laughs> Not really sure. Oh, it's Tisco. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's now a, we're talking. <laughs> it's a holy and, place. And one uh. other special thing. I have seen a lady walking around outside. Not do, knowing what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing. Whoa. <laughs> just, just like, what, like a human lady? What it looks like. Yeah. I didn't get too close. Didn't want her to see me. Yeah, all right, sir. I think we can handle just one person. Like, we, we can we can do that. I mean, there's six of us. Who now? Six of us, one of them. Yeah, and you can probably call, uh, call, call like, two people, maybe. Yeah, you can... We, we can travel to the heart-shaped rock. Uh, you can... You find your way back through the the maze, and the the, the travel to uh, the rock takes um, a couple of days to do so. Um, so you can all you will have all long rested in between now and then. Um, so you can heal, heal back up to full health. Um, and. When you're you're sort of sitting around, um, as well, did you want to say anything about the heart-shaped rock that that you're aware of as a local? Uh, yes, please. 
the uh, the art shape rock. We ain't we ain't gonna be able to get up there now. We we, we need it. we can head that way. I'm all for heading that way. It feels like I've been wandering around this bloody jungle for a couple of weeks now. And seeing as uh, Seamus here with a one with a map has just put a big X through the X that he had on it because that grung grung temple has come up uh, well with nothing. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm all for heading for the art shape rock now. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit of history about it if I can. See, that, that heart-shaped moat that floats in the sky is only accessible from the back of one of these soaring dinosaurs. A bit like the terror beast we, we fought the other week. But we ain't going to get out there, not on foot. We're going to have to find some other means. Now, I'm all up for visiting that place. It's a holy place. That heart-shaped rock is said to be formed from the heart of Ubteo as it hardened against the people of Omnu as they, they dropped him in favour of the trickster gods. You know, they, they dropped a titan, one of the original chaos gods that crawled out of the primordial stream with all the rest of them. Uh, Upteo, he, he managed to survive those titan wars and, and became a god on this earth, and he created the dinosaurs. But the Omu Omuans, well, they, they weren't satisfied, and they started following the trickster gods, the animal gods, and he's hardened, and, and he left this land, and that, that heart-shaped moat is, is a way to contact him directly, so that's why I'm keen to go there. Yeah, you're you, saying you, we get to ride a dragon <laughs> or a dinosaur to get to this place? If we can find one to ride on, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> yeah that might be a bit hard than it sounds, but we'll, we'll <clears throat> we're gonna try. So yeah, it takes you uh, a couple of days to to get to the uh, the heart-shaped rock, and and when you when you do arrive, you, you, you're met with this huge floating uh, mound of, of dirt that's just slowly rotating uh, on the spot. Um, above it is a, a tree that looks to be hollowed out and uh, almost dead, and and it, but its roots stick out. Almost as if, um, like uh, parts of the the heart, and there's there's red blood dripping from from all of the the roots, um, or what looks to be red blood. Um, a, a staircase winds around the side of the heart, um, and uh, for the players, you better see that now on the map. Um, and you sort of stand there, there staring up at it for, for a while. And then a, a woman walks out from the cave that's on the side of the hut and, and looks down at you all. Um, she's a, a tall, slender, uh, elven woman uh, with, with long, um, almost white blonde hair. Um, and she just sort of stands there surveying you all. Cork looks up and goes, Hi! I'm Cork. And I'm Lars. He flexes. Hey, I, I think we should have been a little bit more stealthy, like. But, uh, okay, let's go with this. Too I'm late. Cork. And <laughs> waves. <laughs> what is your purpose? I, 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 I come to seek the, uh, the wisdom of Teo. And I'll, I'll pull out uh, my, um, my holy symbol. And display. We've uh, we've been wandering through this here jungle now for a while, and well, we're on a mission, and uh, I think it's time we we speak to the Father of all gods on this land. And I'd like permission to come up to the heart moat and and converse for a while, if we may. What is this mission you speak of, Seamus? Oh God! <laughs> we're still on my mission. That's that's finished. <laughs> um, but we, we've uh, we, we've been. Um, what were we tasked to do? We we're tasked to look into the uh, undead uh, problem of Chult and the curse of um, yeah, the undead curse that's happening. The death curse. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, the death curse. Um, we've been tasked to look into this and um, find find the, uh, the the cause and uh, some kind of uh, solution. I think that we 
uh, are looking for the same thing, ah. she says. And uh, and with that, she, she reaches into her robes and pulls out a scroll um, and unravels it and starts reading out the, the incantation and making hand gestures. And then a, a sort of cir- a, a glowing circle appears on the floor in front of you. Um, and another one uh, at the top of the, the heart. So she says, um, please come up. We have much to discuss. Do you, uh, could you make that flying disc thing look like a dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, a, a glowy, it's, it's literally a, so, a ring on the floor. Um, okay. Well, well I guess there's no, no dinosaurs. dinosaurs. And What's Lars that? just runs full speed and just jumps right in the. It's a portal, right? It's like yeah, a yeah, yeah, symbol. Yeah. And Lars just runs full speed. So like, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> literally, as soon as you cross the uh, threshold of the circle, you you pretty much instantly appear at the top of the the heart shape. Right? I'll follow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just assume that you all either just watch Lee or <laughs> as, as our compatriots just appear at the top, and then yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So um, she she uh, stands at the bottom of the the entrance. Um, water, uh, red water, seems to sort of flow out of the doorway uh, slightly uh, and off the side. Um, and and as you all walk down, she says, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Valindra. Uh, Valindra Shadow Mantle. Uh, have I heard of her before? Uh, you would have not, no. Okay. Has Lars heard of her before? Uh, no. <laughs> Has Cork heard of her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> And she she <laughs> welcomes you into she, she beckons you into the, the sort of cave uh, inside, um, and, and inside uh, is a sort of study that's been set up inside the heart uh, with bookcases and, and um, a, a rug, uh, a couple of chairs, and a large table. At which there's, there's uh, a couple of candles and a load of pieces of paper and notes with various scribbles and drawings and whatnot. Um, she says, "Come in. Uh, I've I've been investigating this death curse myself, um, and I I'd like some people to to overlook my my thoughts and findings, ramblings possibly." So, do you need us to go out and find those people? <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> um, and she she sort of uh, says to you, "I believe that the the trickster gods have something to do with this." The trickster have gods you... have always got something to do with it. <laughs> Very well. Very true. Um, have you heard of the town called Om? This this town, I will tell you a story regarding the town of Om. It was once uh, a jewel in Cholt's crown, built over a rich mineral vein. The city garnered wealth and abundance, and Omen jewellery was coveted far and wide. The, the city's merchants grew fat on commerce, and to enter Om was said to enter the gates of paradise itself. Uh, such wealth uh, brought greed, and Om's hunger for slavers made her slaves made her rule demand even greater tribute from their neighbours. When their vassals couldn't pay in flesh, they paid in blood, and Om's feared legions marched across Cholt. The Omens' greed and hubris angered the god of Teo, causing him in turn to turn his back on Om. Two hundred years ago long before he abandoned the rest of Cholt. Om's clerics lost their spells and the city fell to sickness and disease and slaver uprisings wrecked Om and its nobles fled in droves. Maps showing its its locations were all destroyed and its coins were melted down and re-minted. Fallen from grace, it became known as the city, the forbidden city. 
And this is where I believe that the source of the death curse is originating. So Cork is sat on the floor, cross-legged, arm, hands on his knees, and just staring intently, trying to understand and just enjoying the story. <laughs> So, Mars is so actually why, looking at the ceiling. <laughs> why do you believe the, the trickster gods are involved in? I believe that the trickster gods have moved into Om and are living, manipulating the area for their own benefit. Trying to uh, rekindle their worshipper base? Correct. And um, you look on her table and she's got drawings of the, the various tricks of gods um, and turns to you and says you, you know of the, the stories of the tricks to god I, I do I do I learned them as part of my uh, uh, apprenticeship at the uh, temple in Mesro. I'm, I'm a follower of Abteo hmm. interesting would you Hello. like to tell the, your your party members this story I um, uh, I, I would, and, and, and please feel free to jump in should I get anything incorrect. As I, as I recounted earlier, uh, the good Ubteo hardened his heart against the uh, Amuans, you know, their uh, treacherous ways in following the trickster gods, and, the, and their greed angered him. Um, and he, he left them to their own devices, but the trickster gods, they, they tried to step in and and help their worshippers because the, the gods only have power when granted to them by the people that worship them. So one morning, a, a wide Zorbo emerged from a hollow tree and spoke to the dying Omuans, the, those that were dying from thirst and hunger that couldn't be saved by the gold and wealth that they'd collected. And convinced Ubta of their worth, she decided to cook him a stew made from all of their good qualities. Catching such virtues wouldn't be easy, though, so she asked the wily Almirage to help her. The Almirage snuck recklessness into the spot, into this pot, which she saw as a virtue, and Ubteo spat out the stew when he tasted it, because he could not, could, could not stomach the taste of recklessness. And from that day on, Obalaka, the name of the Zorbu, and Ijin, the name of the Almirage, became terrible enemies. At noon that same day, a brave Camadan hopped down from her rock. She saw no ev she saw the evil in the Omuans' hearts and decided to lance it like a troublesome boil. The Camadan fashioned a holy spear, but she left it by the river bank, and a crafty grung stole it. In her rage, Shigambi, for that was the name of the Camadan, forgot all about the Omuans and chased Nang Nang, the grung, forever across the sky. That evening, a wily Iblis stepped from his reed hut. He didn't like the Omuans, but without them he'd have no one to play his tricks on. So the Iblis sent the Marsh Frog to reason with Ubteo. But the frog was angry and decided to wrestle the god instead. This amused Ubteo, so he gave the frog tentacles to make it stronger. When Kubazan, the froggy moth, returned to Palpatozzle, the Iblis, he chased Palpatozzle into the swamp with his new tentacles. And that night, a Sioux monster broke into Ubteo's palace and stole a pail of, pail of water for the Omuans, for it took pity upon them and their thirst and their hunger. But when the god came running to find it, the Sioux monster hid the pail in a Jakuli's burrow. Ubteo asked the jungle animals where his water was hidden, and Moa, the Jakuli, was too honest to lie. When Wungo, the Sioux monster, found out how Moa had betrayed him, he failed to catch the Jakuli and eat him up. And all the while, Unk, the flower snail, lived deep under the earth. The noise of all these other animals fighting uh, made her sliver up to the surface, and when the day dawned over her shell, the light blinded Ubteo and made his eyes water. At that point, life returned to Omu, and the people built shrines in honour to the animals who had saved them. They're trickster gods. Yes, very true. Now, there's some people that say that these are just stories for children uh, and a way to teach them of the uh, animals of chopped. Um, but... Which is exactly how Cork has been reacting this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, um, that there's always truth to every tale. Um, and do, do any of you have a map? 
a chance. Why, yes, I do. <laughs> All right, bring out, bring out my map. <laughs> I whip it out. Um, and she she points to a place on the map and says, "This is where you will find Om." Om. Um, nice. Not many people are, are aware of this location, so. Okay. Thank you very if, much. Uh, if that city is as rich as the stories tell, then maybe we'll find your treasure there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Finally, this is going to be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have no idea what's in the box. That's true. That's true. <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> And Lars, Lars does pull out Buster and say, "I'll offer you one." Buster sits down. <laughs> Might she know anything about this box for some reason, or how to unlock the puzzle? You the can box. show it to her if you want. Yeah, why not? I'll just show it to everyone. I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and the box. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I've I've been given this um, by uh, by a, a, a friend of yeah I've been given this. Um, uh, I don't suppose you've seen anything like it. It's very intriguing. No, I have not. Okay. Um, I'm happy to to take a look at it for you if you wish to leave it with me. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'll keep it with me for now. Very well. Um, no, I I also see that there's uh, obviously a number of you uh, are quite sort of strong um, fighters um, and are obviously able to handle yourselves. Um, I am in need of the services of um, some protection whilst I travel through the jungle. Would would any of you consider to be a, a, a cell sword? Yeah, and Lar Lars immediately you know, slams Buster down and starts to sort of like walk forward like in this slow <laughs> kind of what kind of way, just every muscle glistening in the in the light flexing. It says is there, is there mood music suddenly appears from <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Lars no. Lars basically just says, I'm your turtle. <laughs> Excellent. Very, very, very good to hear. Uh, and your name, sir? It's Lars. <laughs> <laughs> At <Well>. your service. <laughs> yes, if you're if you're willing to um, to aid me in my travels, I would be, you know, most thankful. Absolutely, but how much coin are we talking? Uh, what's what's your daily what's your going rate for a day? I don't know how much a, a cell sword goes for these days. Oh, we're gonna have to have at least multiple sacks of coin. Five gold pieces a day, should we say? And he thinks for a second. Make it eight. <laughs> Let's say seven, and you've got to deal. Sold. <laughs> Large as your turtle. <laughs> um, with that, she uh, she says, "I I turns to the rest of the party. I hope uh, I hope that the information I provided you um, is of assistance. Um, if you find the thing that um, is causing the the death curse, if you are willing to bring it back to me um, it, for my research, that would be of great interest to me." Cork is still sat on the floor, just trying to picture animals. <laughs> I, I pick up the cards off the desk and show him the pictures. <laughs> oh, animals. <laughs> While this is going on, Lars sort of turns to, to Obo and says, Well, cuz, looks like this is the end of the road for us for now. But I'm sure we'll see each other again. 
No worries, mate. And I just, I'm just playing around with it. I, I found one of these things over in the corner so I just, It's like this weird clay face. I just thought I put it on. It's it looks nice. great. It fits me really well. Hey, look. <laughs> oh, you always been a joker. And and after this sort of uh, <laughs> encounter with with his cousin there, um, Lars does turn to the group and and starts kind of fidgeting with his. Um, his like pinky claw where mm. he has a, uh, a ring and it looks fairly small, like, you know, on, on his, his large like claw, but he does have a ring sort of stuck on the claw. And <clears throat> he looks at the whole group and he says, you know, and I give everybody this opportunity and let's just say this rings never left the claw. If anybody can take me in an arm wrestling match, this ring is yours, and it's a ring of psychic resistance. Who's up for the grabs, chumps? I'm not looking to get married. <laughs> Everyone yeah. looks at Cork. Cork <laughs> looks at the animal card <laughs> and looks up and goes, What? <laughs> wrestle? <laughs> Cork like arm wrestle. <laughs> So if you want to do uh, just, it's, it's going to be just a straight uh, strength roll off. <laughs> so in roll twenty, do I just click the strength or do I roll? Yep. Up? Yeah, just click oh. on the the strength. And it should just roll you off. Uh, <clears throat> can I can I do have a little <laughs> you know a little tap on the shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just yeah, so just on, tap on the cork. shoulder. Cork, cork, look. Hmm. Just visualize a win in your head, in your head, okay. and you you'll overcome anything. Am I doing I a can't... strength roll or a strength save? I'll cast guidance. Yeah, just, He's just gonna cast on. guidance on you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so I'll do my strength. strength. Yep. Okay. Yeah, just kick him the strength. Mm. There we go. <laughs> so you, you get to add a uh, D4 to that as well. Oh, no... oh this is going to be close. <laughs> oh, so D4. good. Oh, wow. Uh, and Lars is just like uh, putting everything he's got into it. Oh. <laughs> 26. DC <laughs> by one. Oh. Amazing. For, for people who couldn't see the rolls, we both rolled a 19, but he has a slightly higher strength modifier with the guidance. I rolled a four. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a crit on the four, so I took it by one. Nice. So, uh, you know, I, I guess as as we're as we're as we're struggling, Cork does kind of take the lead a little bit and just oh, takes it down on uh, takes it down on Mars. Well, that's Cork never win. happened before. Well, here we go. A turtle's word is a turtle's word, and he slides the. The ring off his uh, off his pinky claw, and he hands it to Cork. Cork didn't even know he was doing it for a ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Cork just like Cork. arm wrestle. <laughs> Cork so happy to now be engaged. <laughs> well, congratulations, Cork. You earned it. He just kind of pats him on the back. Cork bear hugs. <laughs> Cork so happy. Lars is happy too. <laughs> All right. Cork, wear this forever and ever. <laughs> you better. You better always Cork. remember Lars. <laughs> Cork, always remember Mars. <laughs> Close enough. Close yeah, enough, do. dude. <laughs> um, so the, the woman um, turns to you again and says, uh, should you wish to, to make your way, um, you can do so. Um, and she she reads once more the spell, and the the, the portal the hole opens uh, in the, the the chamber that you guys are in. She says, "Unfortunately, uh, as I am an elf, I have little need for a bed chamber, so do not have anywhere for you to to rest." Wow, we've been really unlucky with the uh, hospitality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, should you need any any further information, my my bookshelves are, are yours, and, and 
feel free to peruse my investigation. Basically, it's just doodles on her desk, <laughs> her, her, her thoughts and ah, ideas. Cool. So you like to draw as well. <laughs> well I'll take a look at what she's um, uncovered. If there's anything useful there. Yeah, so it's it's drawings of the the different trickster gods, and so there's all of the ones that you you mentioned. So you've got a, a koala-like creature um, that's just got fur on the the top half of its body, uh, which you're aware is a zorro, um, and uh, a, a, a rabbit that's just got this unicorn horn, um, which is the almorej. Um, and then there's another one of a leopard with, with multiple snakes just coming out from its shoulders. Um, the grung, a grung, which you've, you've already faced or met today. Um, and an eblis, which is like a crane type creature. Uh, the frogamuff, which is the one that you said before, that's massive uh, frog creature with tentacles. Um, a Sioux monster which is basically a, 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 an ape-like creature. Um, then a, a massive long snake and also a snail. Um, so there's just etchings of each of these creatures and the names of the, the trickster gods underneath each of them, representing which ones they are. So the... Um, sorry, I'm getting okay. Uh, the, the sea monster, the undead ape thing that we fought at the Grung Temple... Mm -hmm. Was that an undead sea monster? Uh, it was not, no. Um, so a, a sea monster is basically a, a really large uh, baboon type creature. Okay. Um, but they're, they're known to be quite sinister and evil. Um, is it worth us making a note of all these kind of uh, drawings and things like that, simply because if we ever get that Volvo's guide back, we might be able to reference more information. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll put a note in, in your journal, uh, in everyone's journal, just with the different creatures that, you've, that are on those drawings, so you can refer back to them at a later point in time. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, cool. And I think we're going to leave it there, because it's coming up to midnight um and you now know sort of general area that you're going to be heading into um. so cool um yes thanks for watching everybody um i hope you've uh, enjoyed your your time uh josh thanks for joining us as well absolutely it's a, it's yeah. a great session yeah thank you a lot um, of fun yeah good good job um, i really uh really enjoyed your character was Hilarious. Oh, yeah. That was great. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and thanks, Lee, as well, for stepping in at the oh, last minute. Um, absolutely. So thank you so much. For, MVP for move so. there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, thanks also to uh, Beaver and Grimm um, for sponsoring this, along with uh, Gale Force 9. Um, if you uh, head over, I'm sure someone's going to put a link in Twitch. Uh, Beaver uh, and Grimm have got their Kickstarter open at the minute. Uh, so head on over there and check that out. Yeah. Is there anything else that you that we needed to say? Anyone else we want to shout out that's in chat? And I was going to say next week. Oh, someone's got reverb on that one. Uh, next week we have we're back with the Rune Lords as we investigate Foxglove Manor with another special guest from Beagle and Grimms will be joining us. Oh, so uh, stay tuned for that one. You'd have to say who. No, it's a bit of a surprise, but uh, we, we, you'll find out closer to the day. It's not, a, it's not a secret secret, but it, it's right. um, cool. Yeah, for, well, you'll you'll see. Uh, sign up to our, all our socials, follow us on YouTube, and um, you'll find out when it when it drops. Yeah. Uh, last night's episode is already available on YouTube as well, so you will be able to see uh, both Beadle and Grim as themselves. Yeah. In our Rune Lords that... Halloween mashup. That was a, it was an amazing session. I, yeah. I was laughing through most of that, and I wasn't even playing. <laughs> it's good. I mean, we, we, uh, I've just been getting messages as well from uh, from Pezo, so it's it's been very very well received apparently. So it's um it's good. 
I, everyone everyone enjoyed it. Which is what oh, we're... apparently, is uh, are Beetle and Grimm's live now, are they? They are live at the moment, yeah. They we are could, um... doing something else, I think. Uh, uh, Giants playing Tavern Game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the re replay. So they they've got um they've they've had the name stuck on it for a while. So no. it currently okay. it looks I'm... like a replay of uh Into the Mist. Right. Ah, so unfortunately not live. I just yeah. happened to see You're... them live and thought, Oh, we could raid them. No, you <laughs> You got 20, 20, 20 odd people in there, so that's a, that's a replay of Into the Mist. Cool. You do have yes. uh, official Pezo Pathfinder is open. Uh, what are they Sorry. doing? Oh, they're yeah. doing Band of Bravos. Um, you got ninety odd people. I, I don't know if it's a rerun or not. Is it this Pezo Land? Is it? Is that how you spell it? Same as what um, is in I chat. I don't know what your it's not Pezo Land, no. That's that was a clip. Uh, so it's just, yeah, yeah but... I'm I'm happy to to rate someone if people wanna if people are up for it if we can find someone. Um, obviously you can check back in two weeks here and we will be um, continuing on the story as well. So do so. I I, uh, I think it is. Um, I think our best bet is probably official Pezo. Cool. Because uh, there's Jason cool. Borman's on. And Peyton. So let's, let's let's go and read them. And see what they say. Have you got a link to the? Channel what do you What do you need from me? It's uh, uh, it's Twitch TV official pay. So I'll send it to you on WhatsApp. Yeah, thank you. That's what I need. <laughs> you got you got to say it. You got to say what you want. Oh. Just send me a link. <laughs> yeah. BBC.co.uk. Is it part of the thing that we're talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? We're talking about any stream in the world that's on, like, I don't know. <laughs> or, or we can raid uh, Realmsmith. Realmsmith game is live on their channel. Realmsmith have 165, yeah. Cool, right. Uh, we're going to shoot off. Uh, thank you it, for it's tuning in, guys. season finale. We can't raid their season finale. <laughs> no, that's good for yeah. Raid it, raid it. Uh, Join in and we will uh, join us as we uh, raid Pizo. So enjoy. <laughs> Take care. See you later. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.